Here. Yeah. yeah, very excited. We have longtime friend, um, real estate mogul, <laughs> philanthropist. Ooh. You probably know him best as your favorite foodie con- content creator. Um, does a little bit of everything. Entrepreneur, uh, Brandon from Vegas, Brandon Johnson. Thank you for like, coming on Make It with the Mac. <laughs> no, is. excuse me, behind you. No, <laughs> that's that this is. guy sounds awesome that you're describing, man. I did my research. I fuck- fucking asshole <laughs> no, but thank for, you for coming bro we appreciate always, you man I, I i it's been a while I, i'm glad we finally got to get back together again i know i like that you that you agreed to be on our podcast because all we do is literally like talk, talk about shit. our shit kids and everything i'm like how is brandon gonna be like he and then just sitting with you for the last like 10 minutes i'm like this is great yeah we should talk about your hour. kids dude you just, <laughs> please do i totally we'll no, get I, there we'll get I, there <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't have dad privileges yet. I don't Not work yet. Out Maybe oh, one no. day. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um but yeah, I, obviously you do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um people probably know you from multi like a lot of different facets of life. And I think that's one thing that draws people to you too because like you do a little bit of everything. Like you'll you'll be bouncing around. You'll be showing a house in summer so like Southern Highlands. Then you'll be at like this new Chinese spot that opened in Chinatown and then you'll be talking about like some crazy controversial stuff on this. Th- like, it, I just love you because you don't, you, uh, you said it best earlier. Like he's unapologetically himself. Yes. Yeah. I'm the, uh, I try to call him the anti-influencer. Ah, love that. the influencer. The un- that's fine. Oh, that's good. Marketing. That's catchy. Write, write that down. See, this is why that's you're a good. marketing genius over that's here. That's a good one. See, that's why I go to you for marketing classes behind the <laughs> scenes, guys. I, I hate the title influencer, mm-hmm. right? Cause I don't like to think that I influence Mm-hmm. anybody to do anything right right um i didn't start doing this to be like oh yeah i'm gonna get a bunch of followers and right convince people to buy shit you know i'm just like hey i like doing this thing over here maybe you might like doing it as well if you knew about it kind right of stuff. i just don't like that influencers are if i can pay you a thousand dollars to change your opinion what's the value of your opinion right yeah right like if I post a restaurant and someone doesn't like it, that's okay, right? Yeah. But I need you to know that I like it, right? Right? Yeah. I'll still eat there whether you like it or yeah. not, right? This yeah. isn't like an influence thing. I just I like the place, right? Mm-hmm. But we all know influencers in every genre who 500 bucks can get them to change their opinion. Totally. Right? Yep. So we end up in a place where like, what do these people actually believe? Yeah. Or were they being – my whole thing with uh, TikTok and mostly TikTok – when I'm looking at the screen, at first I look, <laughs> oh no, it's Instagram. First I look up at the top left corner, I'm like, okay, you're ugly because you have a filter. And look at the bottom, and there's a sponsor, yep. and I'm like, and a liar. Ugly liar, we're moving on. Yes. 100%. Sorry, I don't mean ugly. I use filters. But I'm just saying, like, it, and you said this, you touched on this, like a lot of what we see isn't real. Like if we only knew how unreal mm-hmm. social media is, it's ridiculous. How about these, vlo- okay. The vloggers who do like the daily vlogs yeah. where it's like you set up a camera to film yourself walking into a grocery store or you set up a camera yeah. to film yourself waking up, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's not just there? And then you get there? back in bed and take the sheets off. <laughs> right? Like at what yeah. point, right? Like, Very disingenuous. 100%. Like, mm-hmm. How much of your life it's, – it's basically um, – it's reality TV – on steroids. Yeah. yeah. Where like you watch Survivor and you know a lot of it's kind of scripted. Scripted, right? Like there's reality, but like TikTok has taken that concept and oh, like because yeah. sh- now there's millions of people doing it. Right. So it creates a thing where like what what percentage of this is, re- is it even 1% real? Like who are these people anymore? And that's right. what makes you so special too is you are very who you are. Yeah. And there's no bullshit in between. I love that there's you're not getting paid to say a restaurant is good, like you said. You're not getting paid to to like endorse something because and just say it. You do it because you genuinely feel that way. Yeah. There's no there's no bullshit with you, and I love that. Yeah. I really do. I think it's great, especially when it comes to like, I mean, you like he said, you do real estate, you do um, foodie stuff, but you also have, uh, you know, you have you're very very intelligent. I wouldn't. Shh, don't tell me about that. No, shit. but you are. It, and I'm not. Like, I know I am to a certain degree. No, I am. I'm smart, but I'm smart. 
but I'm smart. I'm, I'm wicked smart. <laughs> yeah. I'm smart, but like, I know my limits. I would never speak to politics or speak to certain issues because I know I can't. Yeah. But like, you have, you are. You like, stay in your lane. Yeah. He has a lot of different lanes that where he can does, drive very fast in. Where does this come from? Like, I had no family? friends growing up. Really? <laughs> I read, read a lot books. of books. <laughs> I read the dictionary. Did you really? Are I'm you bored. joking? I'm not joking. I had no friends. I was what a, a fat nerd. little nerdy oh black kid. Oh my God, kid. that's the best. Though. I grew up when like liking anime and video games wasn't cool. And being a black guy who likes Metallica and Death Cab for Cutie wasn't cool then, right? So, like, you know, it's the old joke amongst black people. I was too – Yeah. Uh, I'm the opposite. I was too black for black people and then too white for white people. Like, I, was, I grew up in an era where, like, white guys wanted me to be 50 Cent. Yeah. Right? I understand that. I was probably one of those white guys. <laughs> Being honest. Right? But yeah, because like growing up, like that's who was cool. Yeah. And everybody wanted a black friend, but they wanted your black friend to be like 50 cent. They wanted right. me yeah. to be cool. And I'm I'm not cool. I I'm listened gonna... to every song on Get Rich or Die Trying. I couldn't tell you a single death cab for oh, cutie song. Bro, yeah. <laughs> I wore I wore a tall white tee for so long, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But like growing up, I just wasn't cool. Yeah. So like I had nothing to do, but as an outsider, there's an advantage where you get to kind of like you're like an alien in space, as I call it. Being on the outside, it allows you to like watch how people interact with each other. So I spent a lot of time just people watching, watching and wow. learning how people – I'm not smart. I just get people and why they you're do observant. things. You're observant. Yeah, I'm observant. That's it. And we live in a time where people don't – if it was 1940, no one would call me smart, Right. But I live in this world where I get to come online and be like, girls like guys with muscles and money. And people are like, oh, this guy's controversial. It's yeah. like, well, no, dude. Like, I just, sure. I just know like, that's, that's reality. That's my observation. That's my that observation. A lot of people probably agree with, but a lot of people don't really talk about. Yeah. Like, and so I, I personally, and I'm not saying this to try to be humble or anything. I really don't consider myself smart. Really? I failed so many classes in college. There's so you so grew up here, right? Yeah. Grew up and you went to you guys went to the same middle school. Shout out to yeah. Coronado High, High School. Coronado High School, Greenspun, Gang Gang. Mm -hmm. We had thirty five valedictorians or something like that when I graduated. <laughs> Shit, were you one of them? No, fuck oh, no, it's like participation dude. awards. Yeah, no, they were. It wasn't for my football coaches wanted me to play football. Like you know, you me? were good too. I was good. You so, played football too. I captained the football team. Let's go. Nice. Oh six, baby, Gang Gang. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me coaches helped me through my classes because like really? I just yeah because mm -hmm. I think. Like, I don't know if it's not, I didn't get it. I just didn't give a shit enough to like care about something, yeah. right? right? So like in all traditional ways, I'm not smart. My niece is 14 and she does geometry and she asked me for help and I'm like, <laughs> you better ask chat. But it's GPT. also perspective, like what you consider smart is. Like to me, your intellect on people, so like social, like just your, your perspective on things, that to me is considered knowledge smart. Yeah. You know, to you, your niece doing geometry is my, but you, I, you, you do come with a lot of knowledge and you're very, like, I'll never forget. You told me you were over one day and I was like, they told, uh, I, I heard, uh, I said something very ambiguous. You were like, talking about like something about school, some, not even school. Like it was something like that. Like they say, and you're like, who's they? Yeah. Who's they? And I never fucking thought about that. Now, every time I repeat something that mm -hmm. I saw on TikTok or Instagram, I hear your voice going. Who the fuck is they? Who's they? Who's they? Where are you getting this information from? Do you mind if I stretch something just a little bit? Yeah. So it's okay. Sorry. Stretch that shit. I'm going to stretch a little bit. Okay. In Sweden, 50 years ago, Sweden's very white. They're like the definition of tall white blondes. Yes. Right? Over the past 50 years, people don't know this, Sweden has become one of the sexual assault rape capitals of the world. You call, you, everyone can Google this. If you're watching this and you're offended, I'm just telling you, you can Google this stuff. I know this because, again, I read a lot as a kid and I'm a nerd, right? They, it got so bad that Sweden wasn't allowed to give a description of the sexual assaulter. So it just became they. Wow. Mm. And I feel like that culture has spread here where... You're not allowed to be specific about who's doing something. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Right? We can't be specific about who's doing something. So we just say, white people do this. And I'm yeah. like, what white people do that? Yeah. Black people do this. What ones? Everybody feels comfortable saying they because it doesn't offend anybody. Mm -hmm. But if I ask you to be specific, point that person out, uh-oh, 
now there's a chance that you get in trouble or there's some kind of blowback. So yeah. we just say they, right? And to me, they allows bad people to blend in with good people. Mm. Yeah. Right? It allows so much room for error because there's no um, there's no uh, accountability. Accountability. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, no accountability. accountability. Look at how smart you, I am. Yeah, you can't say <laughs> X amount of percent think this. Yeah. They're just j- bundling everyone together and saying yeah. they. This is why I still call women hoes. It's okay. I'm the last person on I earth. wish I was a hoe. And I well, try to be a hoe, but then I, I get I can, like a yeast I'm going to shut that down right now. You are not <laughs> enough of a hoe. I'd love to be a hoe. Lo- maybe <laughs> aspirational I hoe. try to be a hoe and I say I end up with like yeast infections or something. I'm like, this is why I can't do this. This yeah. is why we try these things and I'm not a hoe. One day. <laughs> We're one working day, on maybe it. Maybe one day you could be a it's hoe. Just, it's, 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 it's not an f- effective health plan. But it's because I don't have a health plan. I don't <laughs> I don't say it to be offensive. No. It's because I don't want young kids to grow up thinking all women right. are like that. Right. I want them to know, no, no, these are women over here and son, these are hoes. <laughs> Right? Call a spade a spade. Call a spade a spade. But if we clump all <laughs> women, like you see this online on social media a lot. Oh, last week you girls were saying this and now you're saying this. It's like, no, dude. Last week, these girls over here, hoes, were saying this. <laughs> and now this week, women over here who aren't hoes are saying that, right? But we've we've used they culture so much that everyone just clumps everybody into the same category. Mm-hmm. Right, it allows the evil and bad people to disguise and hide themselves around the rest of us, and I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I want I want you to sh- show yourself, mm-hmm. show yourself, stand yeah. proud. You want to be a dickhead? You want to be evil? You want to be racist? You want to be all these things? Show yourself. Yeah, show yeah. your cards. Put it out. Show there. your cards. Don't blend in with the rest of us. Stand strong. And right. You do that. You stand. You, you. I am a. I am a classic 1950s sexist boy. Love I would have fit in with a wife beater and some jeans. So and, you love Mad Men. You know. Oh, they're, you know favorite. they're now. And I don't. I probably agree with this. You know they're now calling wife beaters wife lovers. That's a fuck. Am I allowed to curse on your show? Yes. Yeah, That's so God, you- fucking stupid. I see. I like it. What? Who wants to glorify a guy wearing like a tank top as a wife beater? We'll call it a wife lover. No, because you joking? <laughs> Wait, no, I'm not joking. Are you serious? Yes. It's you not a derogatory term. You know what? I've had five seconds to think about this. No, I've had five seconds to think about this, and I just realized we call the shirt a wife beater. Right. It just hit me that I've been using that. But my I whole never life. even thought of yeah. it like that. Oh yeah, you maybe you never made the connection. No, I just was. Why were they used to beat people? I mean, like no, it's just <laughs> exactly. If you saw a guy in a movie with that the, shirt on, he was yeah. usually the guy like, slapping you, chicks around. Exactly. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the idea. Holy like, shit! See, this yeah. is where I don't pay attention. You never to them. connected the dots. No, like, I that's just why thought like wife holy beater. shit. No, I just. I was, was seven years old calling things wife t-shirt. beaters. Yeah, that's. I, that, yeah, I that's remember bad. being in middle school and saying, "Mom, can we go to Walmart? I want. I want some wife beaters." And she, and I don't. I don't remember really her response, but yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah. Or you can just call it a tank top. I'm not. I'm call not it a saying, tank top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> They're called a shirts. I think. What is the technical? Term? Yeah. You know, but that, not that it matters, but it's like, I what? just thought it was interesting. I just saw it last week for the first time. But you see what happened there. I think it's totally okay for people to feel passionate about something and then change their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I'm the biggest call a spade a spade thing. And it took me about five seconds to be like, wait a minute. I Wait, think why are we calling them wife beaters? That's bad. That's really bad. But I think it's stupid that you're renaming something because of culture. Is that why they're changing no, I, it? No, it's not. Oh, a, it's that's not, a, not why. No, it's not being adopted into culture by any means. I think one brand probably got cute with it and said, yeah. "Hey, this is. Let's not call our shirts wife oh, okay. beaters. Yeah. Let's call them wife lovers." Yeah. yeah, there are there are certain aspects of uh, cultures that do need to progress. Right. Yes. right. Like, and I'm. It's see again. This is where I think if humans get together and just have conversations, we can come to rational answers because 10 seconds ago i was all enraged about changing the name and then i was like wait a minute you're right we can we can we can change that one yeah little kids shouldn't be talking about wife beaters like that's that's not healthy right right? i thought about it that way until you said it see we're all progressive here the art of conversation yes it's nice and i think i think more than ever uh, we were talking about this before the show i think that's why it's so important for podcasts to exist in this form, yeah. Oh, yes, I don't want to. I don't want to. Like the other day, uh, Shannon Sharp interviewed John Cena. Mm-hmm. I couldn't be less interested. 
Me too. Right? One PR guy's company told another PR guy's company what to ask and how to seem emotional and, oh, hey, ask this one. This is a good TikTok clippable. Yeah. Right? It was just PR companies talking to other PR companies. To me, that's boring. Yeah. yeah. Here's my approved questions. Here's my approved answers. Don't talk about this. You can yeah. talk about that. Yeah, but it's bullshit. Yeah. This feels like, okay, if I was at your house talk. hanging out, drinking beers with you, I feel like this is how we would talk. Totally. Yeah. Right? The air would be a little bit better, but. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> bit chillier at our house. Yeah, right. But, um, so wait, I want to know more about you growing up here. Why are you doing, what made you choose this route? You went to school here. Yeah. What was your degree in? No, he went to Reno. Oh, you went to Reno. I went to Reno. Oh, that's right. You always came in for the tailgates. Yeah. That's when I would see you, I think. Yeah. Because you were, were I you in a, a fraternity? He was, he was in I was a Lambda Chi up there. Lambda Chi, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Lambda Chi Alpha in Reno. In Reno, <laughs> yes, sir. I don't think they even exist anymore, man. Ooh, They've shut down so many fraternities now. And then I would come back here because my boys were in ZBT, mm -hmm. right? Shout out to Kim Kakis. Yep. <laughs> but going to Reno, I majored in, I don't know, it was like English and Doesn't history, matter. right? Yeah. My goal was to be a lawyer, and I heard that lawyers major in English and history, mm -hmm. right? Turns out I suck mm -hmm. at college. Yeah. Turns out I suck at waking up at 8 a.m. to go to study hall. I yeah. suck at like the discipline of college. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm terrible at that stuff, you know? I'm just really good at yammering, so I switched to communications like every... I don't you would have been a great lawyer, though. No, because they have to do a lot of work. I've met lawyers. <laughs> no, like conversationally, you would have been a good lawyer. Oh, I can argue. I can oh, debate. Yeah, you would have yeah. yeah, but they, 99%, when you meet lawyers and talk to them, 99% of what they do is like, we all see, we all think of it like law and order. Right. Like you're not. in a courtroom, da, da, da. Dude, it's, it's, it's reading. Paperwork. It's studying history. Yeah. It's like yeah. this case from 1984 was justified. That It's like really knowing your shit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I'm shitty at that. Yeah. I'm I'm bad. There, oh, I mean, I say this all the time because you say that you you see Law and Order side of it, and then whenever I see like a uh, a show where there's a courtroom, all I see is theater, because there's the Law and Order behind the scenes where you're just reading and it's nerdy and it's studying, and then there's the big fancy lawyer who gets up and he's appealing to the jury and he's persuasion and all that kind of stuff. I see just see dr dr drama and yeah. theater. Do you think that's crazy? I think it's. I say this all the time. I think. Our justice system. Not that I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. Oh my god! What are you talking? Hold on, about? not because I don't even have. Let him cook. Let him cook. No, him cook. I, have, I haven't even like formulated these thoughts. Like, what was the what was the Jake Gyllenhaal show? Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, presumed innocent. That on Apple TV. Great show. It's a remake of an old movie. Yes, from but I just I, I'm watching it, and the 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 lawyers. It's all manipulation of, of facts and what they can prove and what they can't prove. Yeah. And it's just so interesting to me, like art, like the idea of our like justice system and having a judge and a jury and two attorneys that are like appealing and sharing certain aspects of it, and you have to present some of it to the judge prior, and then sometimes it shows up the day of, and then yeah. sometimes it can be presented, and some kind of can't. And please don't like correct me; I'm not like uh, he's just uh, going off a movie he saw, literally <laughs> just an Apple TV show. Yeah, but I just think it's crazy. You think about this. You can end up in jail if another person can't out act. Yeah. Yeah, you. The other person's yeah. guy. That's what I'm saying. It's like right? Chicago. They both Your reach lawyer could have done gun. a shitty job and the other guy could have done a much <laughs> better job. job. <laughs> and you could be innocent but still be in jail. Think about that. That's, and vice that, versa. That is how we have had thousands of years of trying to like test out systems, right? And what we've come up with is two dudes in Armani suits. Yeah. Who did coke Probably. the night before, arguing with each other? Come on, we. I mean, Shout let's out go. Drew. <laughs> that did coke the night before. He's not a lawyer. Arguing with he's, each. <laughs> no, he's not a no, lawyer. He's not a lawyer. <laughs> arguing with each other the night before about allegedly your innocence, right? And which most lawyers know each other, right? Yeah. So it's not like it's like they're true right. adversaries. They're yeah, just like no, yeah. They're putting on a show for the it's audience, a show. right? That's what I'm saying. For I a jury, think, yeah. I think, and oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. I think court would be so much more interesting if we went back to like Braveheart level punishments, where <laughs> if you get presumed guilty, two horses are going to go in opposite directions and pull you apart. Oh shit! Or like we're gonna guillotine you on the spot, and everybody in the public gets to watch it. Yeah. How few crimes would oh, be committed your, mm. if you lose, bro? There's no jail time. We're going to take a guillotine, and in front of all of your friends and family mm -hmm. on TikTok, we're cutting your head smooth. This is very Italian of you, though. Streamed live on Twitch. This whoa, whoa, whoa. is very Italian of you to think this because, you know, like you steal, we take a finger. 
You mm. lie, we, you know, put your head in a vice. Like, yeah. you know, like that's very... Do you think we had more crime then or now? I mean, it depends I, on who we, you're talking I've to. Had, we've had this conversation. It, it's hard to tell because I don't know if there's like a magnifying glass on... Because with social media, we're now that's exposed right. to a lot more than sure, maybe we were. Sure, I don't know if that inflates it or if it's accurate. Like we talk about this a lot. Like when we were kids, we were out running amok all the time. Sure, there was no um, like predators around us. Well, right? I mean, there was. But nothing. we didn't know. We didn't know that. Right. They were and your parents weren't hovering. You left, and the news had to remind your parents that your kids were. Right. It's sure. eleven o'clock. But now, do you know where your kids are. Exactly. Yeah. But now all kids have phones, and they can come in that way. So, are yeah. there more of them? Because they're coming in digitally. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I think it's Pandora's box, right? Where like once you open them, once when we were growing up, I didn't know about politics and sexual behavior. I was at a Coronado football game because my niece is in the band. Okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. I trust you. <laughs> Me and my wife are sitting in our old high school stadium for the first time in 15 years. And we're sitting next to freshman boys who are talking about porn stars. Really? They know Hawk Tua. Oh, yeah. Social media. <laughs> social media. Like, seriously. It's bad. It trips me out that, like, porn stars and hoes get to post on these apps and introduce your kid to sexuality at 12 years old. Yeah. It trips me out that eight-year-olds are talking about racial justice. It's like, whoa. When I was eight years old, I was calling my friends all kinds of racial slurs mm -hmm. right i was a bad little kid but we didn't know about racial justice we just knew like here's yeah, some bad you words were making fun of your are, friends. this is the language we use with yeah. each other it's loving it's not 100 percent. yeah it's not out of hate i think these kids know they're smarter than us but i think there's a consequence to that and that's they we as people know more stuff now right we really do we just yeah. we know i sound like such a freaking caveman i think we just know too much I think, I think, I think, yeah, we need I think to get ignorance stupider. is bliss sometimes when it, it comes is. to yeah. when it comes like now I, I, I notice my dad, he, he watches the news 24 seven. It drives me fucking insane because I'm like, first of all, you're always you're depressed. It's not feeding you in any way. But that's what he does. That's what he does. To I want to stay informed. Yeah. yeah. He want, not even informed. I think that he just truly loves the distraction, the conversation and whatever. This is just how he grew up. But also the thing that's a little bit scary about now is like you were when you first started talking about influencers and stuff. I think people are so intrigued too because it's now it's not like watching um, Survivor or whatever Big brother it was. or whatever. It's it's so interactive now. You can actually feel right. like you have an opinion and can affect these people through comments, through yeah. reaching out to them and stuff like that. So much more interactive as opposed to like if we watch something on TV, we couldn't. Like, I was so happy when I got my Teen Bot magazine and I had, like, Jonathan Taylor Thomas's address. <laughs> so you dating JTT. yourself. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas. JTT. That man had a full house, if you know what I'm talking I about. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Wait. No. I don't. Sorry. Uh, wrong, it, what's the Tim Allen show? What's wrong? It's the Tim Allen show. Home uh, Improvement. Movement. Uh, no. Uh, um, oh, f uh, with Tim Allen and he would go to the wall with his neighbor. The home, yeah, improvement. home improvement. Damn yeah. it. Oh, my yeah. full yeah, house joke. Womp, well, womp, It's womp. okay. It's okay. You just aged yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love home improvement. But like, we just made our kids watch all that stuff. Yeah, our son. Good. Would they have, yeah, go ahead. What do you, what? I want to talk about kids with you too. Because of what we're saying in that, you know, our generation was taught to don't live in a bubble. Go out there and. You know, ask why. Ask why and yeah. get your experiences. And now we're kind of looking back and it's like, oh, I wish I would have had less experiences, <laughs> yeah. right? How does that affect you guys with your kids? Are there, are there, how do you guys handle social media with them? How do you handle television with mm -hmm. them, right? Where kids Water shows rolls. are now talking about some, like, how do you guys deal with that? It, it's, we've had different stages of it. So I think our generation, millennial parents, Grew up when they when we'll we first had kids. Us. Yeah, we'll speak for us for the most part. But I think kids who are of our age and have had kids roughly 10, 12 years ago, we immediately gave two year olds iPads. It was like the VCR of our. It time. was cool. It was like yeah, like we got put in front of a TV because it would occupy the kids while the mom could change a diaper or, or go get something, shit, yeah. or I could go do dishes and he'd be safe go and work. fine. Yeah, it's fine. If short little inter intermittent periods, sure, go ahead. That snowballed and affected them four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Yeah. And our now mm. almost twelve year old 
um, we had to start peeling back everything. We got rid of, they never had social media accounts, like Ever. never posted. No, they've never been we on social We never got media. to that point. Not that if you have, we're judging you. I am. He is. We're not because <laughs> we have kids. He can judge, he can l- have grace once he has the kids. But like we never, we, we peeled it back a little bit. Then we got rid of like YouTube shorts. Now we got rid of YouTube altogether unless it's on TV. Yeah. We like watch we're watching together. a show and we can see what you're watching. Yeah. Someone made a good post on TikTok. They said, go to any trending topic, right? You know, you post on TikTok and at the bottom it shows you the, the trending topic. Yep. Go to any trending topic and scroll down one time and it's just porn. Oh, shit. It's just girls taking a trend and being pornographic. Yeah. yeah. And TikTok doesn't limit your – your kids no. know what Hawk Tua is, right? Yeah. No, T- no, my kids don't. No, no, not, I, not you, not oh, you. Oh, no, these Our high school kids. kids. Yes. Oh, Our kids. kids, yeah. TikTok, the TikTok algorithm – Oh, yeah purposely feeds kids the good stuff yeah. you think I mean, they're you think they're getting bluey and it's like no here's right. here's donald trump for your kids here's yeah. the, the the porn stars are, are getting to your kids algorithm it's right true. sure and it's just like what's the what's that line i'm i, I ask parents this a lot and I, thank you guys for talking about it on no, camera yeah, but we'll talk what's about the line between sheltering a kid and protecting a kid so, it's hard if i could go back i would have never given our son a device ever no no device nothing i wouldn't i mean not ever i wouldn't give him not, access definitely not at two here's the ipad yeah Watch i would in your car seat. yeah yeah i yeah. wouldn't give him like the kids too that i thought was harmless because it's that it's almost like that porn thing where it's instantly gratification yeah. it doesn't it it doesn't satisfy you so you move to the next thing right yeah re- yeah uh, Wait. Le- even less about the content how much it fucks up their brain yeah, of just so, boom 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 and boom, not boom. That, and not that there's this, so many different ways and not that it's gone so like I feel like we've handled it well, but the biggest thing with them is the pull with the twins. Like we pull back, we're like, okay, we're having quiet time. You can watch a movie. Anything they watch has to be longer than thirty minutes, because other than that, it's just too. Yeah, th- it's too much. We'll, we'll notice like if they sit and watch a uh, seven, you know, three minute kids YouTube videos. That after their quote quiet time, they're little fucking maniacs. Yeah, their brains are fried. Yeah, they're running around like crazy. Yeah. Versus if we tell them to go watch a half hour show or an hour movie, they come back. They're kind of like they they crawl out of it easier. Yeah. And we're not perfect. Like we want our kids to be immersed and know what's going on. We don't want them to be the like. Are we want them to? We want them to. We don't want them to feel like they're the Amish kid at school. Like, yes. oh, I've never seen YouTube yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. So there's a. I mean, everybody and there's nothing does their wrong with that. That's what. Okay. So that's that's man. Okay. This is why I like hanging out with parents. I told you guys before. I love people with kids because mm-hmm. I think right now the most interesting conversation is what's going on with kids. Yeah. No one wants to talk about it, but I think it's interesting, mm-hmm. right? It's like okay, I've met your kids. One of the things I like about your kids is that they still feel like kids. Right, your kids still yeah. feel like kids. They still play. They still do kid stuff. They have dirt yeah, on yeah. their knees. Right, they're rambunctious. They're kids. That's that's right. Do your kids still have an imagination? Yes. Yeah. De- it depends, though. Personality plays a big role in that too. Like, yes. In in, but I do think removing the board thing, like let them be bored, is a big deal. I yeah. think allowing, like today, today Dean really wanted this book, this Pete the Cat book. They read at school. And I'm not going to be honest with you. I've read maybe four books to those twins because I just haven't read books to them. Yeah. They our think our it's two oldest ones every night. Every okay, what fucking book do you night. Want next? Yeah. They were the on twins, my lap. All right. Lay in bed. We're going to play a song. Yeah. I, it, it, because with the twins, it was survival. It really was. But with my older kids, I would sit and read and we would talk and discuss. And, you know, and, there, and I don't, one is not better than the other because it doesn't, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Yeah. Now, so they're really interested in reading, which is wonderful. So I almost think I did them a, a service by not shoving it down their throat because now they want to read. Yeah. Well, Dean, we didn't have this Pete the Cat book he wanted. So we looked it up on YouTube and he started creating the book himself. So he would listen to the story, draw what he saw, and wrote the words that he saw because he wanted to, the book for himself. So he made it for himself. Now, I wouldn't call that imaginative, but I would also say like that's pretty resourceful. Like he wants the yeah. book. So he made it for himself. He got four pages in. And does he know the words? No, but he would pa- listen to it, pause it, and write what he saw on the screen and draw uh, an illustration to go with it. See, that's beautiful. I think that's great. I was very proud like, of yeah. him for doing that. Yeah. So I don't know if that's uh, 
imaginative or it's it, it is an imagination creating something from nothing is imagination right the idea that you could do that yeah i mean he was plagiarizing but continue <laughs> yeah, it's okay <laughs> but it, to him it's not plagiarizing I know, I'm just no no oh, okay, okay okay i'm here i am look at no, me I'm i know he's not Bro, plagiarizing. I so <laughs> no but here's the thing i was going to ask you this because yeah. you've just recently got married congratulations well not recently well, a year ago, no, it's, a recent, year ago. It's, recent, it's recent it's recent i i don't know if you uh the transition from dating to marriage has changed your relationship by any means. I've known her it's for too same. long, bro. Yeah. How long have you been exactly together? I've known her since I was like 18 years old. Wow. Really? Oh, dude. Okay. Did you go to high school? I, I don't think so. She was a, she was a, I'll tell the story really quickly. It's my yeah, favorite I story hear it. to tell. So my graduation party, right? I got dumped. At your party? The, right before I went to the party. I got Call dunked. her ass out. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> dunk? So I show up. I'm, in a, you know, I'm 18. I'm taking it harsh. Oh, right? dumped. Dumped. I thought you said dunked. I'm like dunked. And, dunk and dunk. I've always been a legendary drinker. Like, you could put them away. I, in my day, I was, I've been drinking since I was like 14 years old. Right? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm a legendary drinker. And I'm r- remarkably hammered. Right? And I could always tell I was hammered as a kid. Because I started smoking cigarettes. When I was real drunk, I would just start puffing cigarettes, right? Wow. And I'm puffing on a cigarette outside, hammered, and these, and my uh, best friend of mine, I'm not going to name him, he shows up with his, his sister pulls up, his younger sister and her friend. And I'm hammered, and I just start <laughs> talking to this girl, talking to this girl. And as I start to sober up, my brain's like, wait a minute. I know how old his younger sister is how old is her friend and i go how old are you <laughs> in my drunken stupor and she's like 15 i said oh say no more enough said i said listen to me i'm leaving to college when i get back we'll talk and she's like yeah right you're never gonna talk to me again and now we're married so that's mm-hmm. how long i've known her All right the way. We, We've been in each other's life. Re-meet? How did you get back together? You came back. It was like college? a magnet, dude. People talk about these stories all the time. It was like a magnet. When wow. I moved back, everywhere I was, she was. Wow. If I worked at a club, she would show up at that club, and it would just be like, "Oh, hey, haven't you?" Right? Thursday it was just, night, ladies' night. One hundred percent. No matter where I was, I would run, I would run into her everywhere I went. Yeah. Everywhere I went, it, it, we would just bump into each other, and That's finally, crazy. yeah. And it's so it's like. For me, nothing's changed. Okay, so you just marriage has just been what it's always been. It just you guys. And it's like, just now I can't yeah. shit talk her as much because now she gets to take half my shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. That's the only thing that's changed. Dudes Go off, are queen. dudes are in, now. You guys are married. So dudes are in such an awkward position with marriage. How so? We have everything to lose, right? Facts. Yeah. We're never going to win anything. Facts. Yeah. Right. And it's such an awkward position, right? Because she doesn't have to be nice to you anymore. Everyone's always going to take her side. She'll just be like, he's whatever, right? I, you're not this person. It's okay. I'll be hypothetical for Hypothetically. You. you don't have to be a good person anymore. There's nothing he can do. This is why I respect good wives and good mothers more now than ever before. In the 40s and 50s, if you were a good wife, it's because... It, He's going to leave and take everything, and you can't own a credit card. You can't have a mortgage. You have to be nice to this man, or right. you lose everything. Yeah, yeah, true. So you couldn't tell if she was being nice because she genuinely loved this dude or because she was her whole life was attached to this man. Mm-hmm. Right. Nowadays, it's the opposite. If, you, if he leaves, you get everything. So I didn't you know have, that. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the state, I'm a realtor. In the state of Nevada, if you're married and you buy a house, even if she's – whatever – so good to know. Yeah, you get everything. <laughs> keep that in your <laughs> keep that in your back pocket. So you being a good person means yeah. you genuinely are this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have more respect for moms and wives today than ever before because they're choosing. Because they're choosing to be yes. a good person even when they don't have to be. They're choosing the choosing to 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 do what they choose, like they want to do. They're not. It's not a. What's the force? Get him another beer. <laughs> I want a <high> beer. <laughs> Aaron, you throw him a beer? Thank um, you. It, because if I wanted That's to good. work, I totally would go like out in better? the world mm-hmm. and do that because he would never hold me back. Now. Never. Do whatever the fuck I want to do, truly, because I will do it. But I, and he loves and, it, and I appreciate his role. Thank you, sir. 
I really do. And I, I, but you're right. I, women do choose if they choose to stay home and be a mom, it's because not because they're forced into it or guilted or it's society. Yeah. It's their yeah. choice. Do, do you mind if I speak on something slightly controversial? I don't know if it's controversial no, to I your mind. audience. Continue. Would you mind? No, go ahead. You can say whatever you want. If there's one word I hate in the, if I could remove one word oh, from no, the did dictionary, I just say it? it's not the N word. I think the N word's kind of hilarious personally. <laughs> Think about it. You go to a rap show where everyone's singing the lyrics and most of the audience is white. Yep. You can't but say the word. Ninety percent of the word is a word that they can't say. Yeah. I catch myself. I think it's hilarious. I think it's, I think the I think it's ironically hilarious. I think stay at home mom is the most derogatory, oh. disingenuous fraud. There is no such thing as a stay at home mom. There's just moms. Mm. Interesting. There's no such thing as a stay at home mom. There's moms yeah because if you're not home then your kids being raised by whom Mm. right yeah i think throughout we have let's call six thousand years of human history in only 40 of those six thousand years is the word stay at home mom a thing and yet we treat it like it's normal for all of human existence yeah i think that word is so derogatory and i think it's such an insult to women that Mm. it at my blood boils. Really? I never thought of it like that. What is it? What is a stay at home mom? You're just a mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're the best thing. You're the best thing. You're the, there's not a bad man with a good mom on this planet. And I mean that a hundred percent. I think it's a, it's a differentiator because you're right. The last 40 years and to, to some degree, a very small percentage of women worked prior to that. But sure. to your point, the last 40, 50 years, Women did not, they were not involved in the workplace yeah. and now they are. Just a mom. What do yeah. you mean just a mom? What? So, okay, so because you file papers at some HR company, you're better than a mom who like gives life and, and, and keeps a family together? You're mm-hmm. better than her? You get to say just a mom mm-hmm. because you push papers? Because you stand at a construction site with a sign up? Because you're a boss babe, you're better than her? No, yeah. get the fuck. I do hate the term boss get babe. Get the fuck out, get I don't out of my face, dude. Your MLM model. No, yeah, yeah, you're a boss babe. Yeah, you sell overpriced products to other women and then claim sex. Yeah, out of here. My, I, you see, you can see like no, I know now. It's, anger brain, it's coming out. But this is more okay. recent. Your sentiment towards this is more recent. Or do you have you always yeah, is, felt is this, this way? Is this new married Brandon? This is Brandon who is not afraid of public backlash because now you guys have decided that me eating food has given me the right to pop <laughs> off with my opinions, right? But and so, when you say you guys, you mean us or the people? The people, yeah, that's what I, I soft tested my opinions, soft tested, mm-hmm. floated some of the stuff out just to see how people feel, and no one's canceled me yet. No one's got mad at me yet, so now I get to keep kind of. But that's like, also a good because that's going. who you are. You're not afraid to be you. Yeah, my, I love that. My mom, remember Andrew Tate, or yes. is this okay? There she has this, no idea. Okay, there was this big fear that this that this Andrew Tate guy would teach men to be misogynistic and hate women and all this stuff. And I'd always say, brother, I love my mom. There's not a single man on earth who could teach me to hate women, right? Because I love my mom too much. Yeah. The mm. only men you can convince to like treat women poorly are men who don't love their moms that way. And now you have a bigger issue, right? Yeah. I'm so defensive of moms, but in this, mo- it's so weird, right? No, that we it's live not in this, weird. We, we live in this world that like is supposed to love women. But when I say, hey, I love moms, everyone freaks the fuck out about it and i don't think it's controversial to say that like the word just a mom should die yeah you know it's so funny you say that too because now all the kids are in school full time yeah um i don't get offended as of two weeks ago yeah so this is two weeks it's new but like the this is why i didn't want to ask you like oh you're married are you going to have kids because i'm i'm always met with okay they're in this they're in school all day what are you going to do now i'm like yeah everyone expects her to like Okay, what what Not did you expect. what job did like, you apply for this week? Oh, yeah. I can teach my 14-year-old niece to work a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can teach my 14-year-old niece to work a job. I can't teach grown ass men how to be good parents. Right. I can't teach grown ass women how to be good moms. And we act like that's what's crazy to me. They act like because your kids are in school that like, oh, you're just sitting at home all day, yeah, yucka yeah. ducka. As if you don't have a million things to do. No, and and that's the thing. Like I've spent the last two weeks like finishing projects like around our house. Like I peeled up a floor, redid baseboards, like sanded, painted, just because I Heidi felt like from it. Home improvement. Yeah, yeah, no. I just because I there are things I I've been that. 
things that I've been wanting to do, but I haven't had time because no matter, there's always an issue. There's always somebody that needs me. But, also because I'm not on handy and somebody has and to I do, do it. And I do love doing it. Yeah. Bro, I'm with you, bro. Yeah, I love I love. Find you a woman who knows how to work my a girl hammer. Just painted, my girl just painted the whole house like a gangster. Wow. Mm-hmm. While I was upstairs on little Zoom calls. Shit, Clicking. I was playing NCAA 25, boy, watching her, cheering her on. <laughs> She's killing, downstairs swinging a hammer like fucking it, Rosie the Riveter. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, the reason I brought this up to you is because I know you have spoken. I, you're gonna have kids. You, you. Before we started, you were like, "I love kids." Oh, I'm practicing. You're, <laughs> you're doing some fucking it's best, tonight. It's the best part about having you know, kids. Drew, no, it's fucking exo- bro. Quick second. How long have you been seconds trying? Of it? This- <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for giving, uh, thanks, for giving me a, thanks for giving me an extra 20 seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did having kids make sex less fun for you? Uh, less fun. Like when you were trying. For, are you we asking him or much. both we, of us? No, we didn't have to try much. I'm asking dude. Oh, you, you, you're, you're, you're yeah, I got Michael you got it really, kids. It really is terrible. Not terrible. It's a blessing. But I got pregnant with the twins like IUD. Yeah, when we had like, our oldest, it was within a month. We, the second by accident, third and fourth, accident ish. Yeah, I've never been, I've never been a jealous person, right? Like, never. Nothing makes me. Hearing how easy it is for you guys to have kids, I'm. I don't like, know why envy is is slowly welling yeah. up inside but of me. But I will say though, um, I didn't know you were talking about that. Like, are you talking about like so sex? I took it that way too. Sex is like. Um, when I had a baby, it was very weird. It became very, like, very, um, it became kind of like a, not a chore, but like, it was really hard to enjoy it after yeah. having a baby. And it became awkward for us. Like, who's going to initiate? Yeah. Is she too yeah. tired? A lot of these questions came in that came, got weird. But I was just telling him our last Real Late and Relatable that we did. I was like, do you feel like now that we've been married, like, we've been married, we've been together, what? 17 years. 17 years. We've been married. That's 100 years in, in millennial it, it, time. I mean, it's a long time. And we've been married 13. Uh, 2011, so 13, yeah. 13 years. And I'm like, I feel like our intimacy is so much better now Yeah. than it was. Like, it was fun when we were young, and then it got very hard and very weird. That's the way to put it. It was fun, and now it's better. And now it's like, it's, it's much better. This is why I love married people. Because... You guys get it, right? Mm-hmm. I think every person who's ever been comfortable to talk about this subject, I think we all come to the same answer. It goes from fun because you're just like fucking, right? Yeah. It's like butterflies and Yeah, it's fucking. It's it's the yeah. good stuff. Yeah. But then it then like you're breaking down these like intimacy walls of like insecurity, oh, uncomfortability, yeah. vulnerable. vulnerable, dark secrets. Okay. Okay. Sh- okay. Uh, uh, let me, let me try playing with her butt a little bit. See if she like, right. It's like, who's going to break this wall down yeah. and test out like, if you like this or not. Yeah, yeah, right. Totally. Like, um, I always tell guys the first, the most, the weirdest thing for guys that no one prepares us for is how to propose to a girl and how to show her your dick for the first time, right? <laughs> Those are like two vulnerable moments because it's like, oh God, I'm yeah. exposed. I don't know what to yeah. say kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It gets hard, then it gets better, right? The dick yeah. or the proposal? <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, so right now with me and my wife, every time she's ovulating, it's not sex for fun. No, yeah. it's work. It's like, all right, Brandon, hit the pen, Yeah. pound the whiskey. It's time to, you know, I don't care how tired you are. I don't care if you're not in the mood. I'm old now. Sometimes yeah. I don't feel like fucking. I'm fucking yeah. tired, right? But we ain't fucking for fun no more. Is this is work? Yeah. Did you have that? Not not for the sake of trying to get pregnant. No, we never had that. Okay. We did have it for the sake of like I wanted to. She had just had a kid x amount of time ago. The the times that we've had sex are now much more infrequent Months than they used apart. to be. Yeah. Like, come on, let's check some boxes, kind of thing. That's what that was the pressure that I was imposing unintentionally yeah that's the pressure that she was feeling like i haven't had sex with my husband in three months yeah it, well, i need is a, he gonna go somewhere else for it like yeah. but also i'm i'm also processing being a new mom if i had a c-section healing 
also like you're you're so vulnerable your nurse like my entire body yeah, there's be- a, a three month old right here next to it are yeah. they gonna wake up like i the last thing i wanted to do was put my tits in his face and when i've been milked all day like and i didn't understand that till like seriously i re- <clears throat> this is no offense <laughs> but this is why i was more excited dudes we get to hear our own perspective right, right? I've never heard this before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a unique and honest perspective I've never heard before. Mm-hmm. Your insecurities. Oh, totally. And my body was just like your your skin's very loose. You don't you don't feel like um you you your your hormones are fucking all over the place. Number 1. And you're at the mercy of this child. All you're doing is I'm not joking. The first 2 months of a newborn of newborn stage if you if you're nursing, if you choose to nurse and it works for you because it's a very difficult thing. It's a whole other fucking. You think fuckings work? Wait till you get to your wife gets to nursing. Yeah, just stay if out she of the chooses deep. to do it, it's a very, it's a very, it's either easy or it's a battle. But I'm half naked on the couch all day, all day, just either nursing, changing a diaper, swaddling, putting him down. Hopefully he'll take a nap. If not, if he's not taking a nap, uh, what am I doing for that thirty minutes? Am I showering? Am I actually eating? Can I watch a show? Can I take a nap because I'm exhausted? The first two months are just so they're so strenuous on the woman because and then he has useless fucking nipples. And here so, I am trying to pitch in like, yeah, I'll take what? him for a walk while you shower. Yeah. yeah or I'll get up early so you can sleep an extra two hours. And, and I think I'm doing like a solid. Yeah. And maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but it's nothing compared to that. Yeah. But I, okay. But I would suck his dick <laughs> just because. Just She's because. Li- that oh, fucking stop. lie detector is no, going. Stop. Stop. When I had the twins, I'm just joking. I was very proud of myself because my sister was always me. She's like, got him, like you got him. So I, I was like, okay, I'm, this may be out of commission because I wanted to, not because he was imposing on me. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this job. What a real one. This service. Yeah. Like, but but the, that goes back to that goes back to what I said earlier about <laughs> you choosing. Yeah. Because you don't have to. Once you have the kid, no one's ever going to take his side again. Right. Ever. I never looked at it that way. That's crazy. That's all. That's, oh my God. Uh, that's my, I told my wife this. I'm an honest man. I'm a good communicator. I, I, love I, that. I have many flaws, but communication is not one of them. I'm a yapper. And I told her my biggest fear is that, like, once I put that ring on your finger, you don't have to fuck me ever again. Mm-hmm. No one's ever going to feel bad for me. Right? Yeah. But the fact that you're, we're even willing to do that. Yeah. Well, it, and also there's, you know, there's a part of, m- that wants that intimacy as well. Yeah. Like, you know, you want it, but you also can't get yourself there. I never thought about so that. In your That's got to be a mind fuck for you guys too. Like, it really is. Yeah. You want to, you want to be quote corny yeah. or get, I have want sex to. with your husband, yeah. but you physically can't get yourself there or mentally yeah, you can't mentally, get yourself there. Yeah, mentally you're just there. drained. Because in our it head- even 10 times worse. Yeah, we're always worried if we're still sexy to you. I never contemplated that you worried- Oh my God. Always. That and I mean, and I I don't. A lot of women. I mean, it, let, let's talk about that first two months. You are not in your own body. You are, you are I'm in your body, so. and but it is a it is it is healing. It is working. It is like there's so many things going on, and like I said, like I've had I I nursed both of my kids the 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 first two until they were one and a half ish. And then the twins, I did it for six months, and then I just couldn't anymore because it was just, it was too Two much. Two at once. That's a lot. It was too much. That's a lot. But I was pumping, and it, I wasn't, it was just becoming stressful, so I switched to bottle feeding where he could be helpful. But with the twins, I have to say that really, I think that really opened his eyes, and he kind of had to. I couldn't, I would pump, and we would each get a bottle and feed the babies because I couldn't put them both on all the time. So I would pump. He would get, so he'd have to get up and do She'd night feeding. She'd wake up 30 me. minutes before they were about to wake up. Pump. pump, get all the, the milk out, then okay, wake them up, and then wake we'd each you, would no, feed they one, would wake up. whatever, 20, 30 minutes feeding one, okay, then burp them, then change, change them, them, then put them down. It's like a two and a half hour process. It is, and then they wake and up. And then put them <laughs> down, and then you, you sleep for two hours and do this shit all over again. Yeah, because n- newborns eat between two and a half, to every two and a half to three hours, between the first month, month and a half. I you was, should have kids. Dude, okay. <laughs> this is why I'm like, it's, it's, it is... You're, a mind fuck. Do you, do you think it? Okay, how do I phrase this? Because again, uh, I got to be the guy who's pro women. Is yep. it, cr- is it cr- crazy? Like you just make milk. 
Yeah. Like one day your body just makes milk. Well, the baby, that- the baby comes out and your body actually produces something called, I love this. That, cause this, I love- she wants to be, cause everyone tells her she no, has to go get a job. Why. She wants to be a, a lactation specialist. Your body starts by making this stuff called colostrum. That's kind of like thick honey for, it's very hard for them to get out. So you automatically think they're not eating, but it's actually like liquid gold that only lasts uh, three days. And your body just does this. You just, your body you just, just does it. Not, so, not every woman though. Let me be clear. This is not, I don't know why God gave me the ability to have children and nurse because there are some women that struggle very hard with fertility and struggle with nursing. But for me, it was very, it, it just came naturally. And I had to do, cl- I went to classes, I sought advice, I asked a lot of questions, I called people, whatever. When I hit a wall, I would reach out to somebody. It wasn't easy because I was the only person in my family who has ever nursed a baby. My mom was handed a bottle when I was born to give me. So this was all new to me, but it's the colostrum for three days, which is the best thing for your child. After three days, you just get totally engorged with milk and then it just starts flowing, usually. Usually. Like that's how the body's made to best do Best case it. scenario, yeah. Yeah, best case scenario. This is this is why moms are so much more interesting. You talk to a single girl about a conversation oh, and well. it's just all boba <laughs> and television. Boba's good. I, don't, I, don't I really love want, boba. I don't want to hear you talk about boba and television <laughs> and your fucking stupid shit. But see, this I want dope. to hear. I want to hear about the boba and what's trending nah, and what you're dope. wearing. No, <laughs> no, this is fucking fascinating shit. Wow, I'm so I love how intrigued I'm, you dude, are, dude. Right I'm this. fucking in. I could talk about lactation for the next hour. <laughs> this is dope. This is the turn good, to chapter three, class. <laughs> this is the good shit. So you had nobody <laughs> to learn this thing from. No. Just I in the general healthcare system, and please correct me when I'm wrong here. Like they they send like when you have a baby in the hospital, they'll send like a lactation specialist for like a 25 minute period. Yeah. Hey, do this, do that, do that, and then you never see him ever again. Sure. It's, yeah. Right. But if you reach out to the lactation network, yeah. Shout out Shamel. Shamel. There's, there's a network. <laughs> oh, there's oh, yeah. a network, and they yeah. set you up so insurance will cover somebody who will come to your home and assist you. Yeah, there's a really amazing services that do that, but I would say f- probably for the the vast majority of women who have babies, they they don't yeah. have help. I didn't have that opportunity. So I went to classes. Someone was like, "Take a class." So I took classes, asked all the questions, and then when it happened, I just figured it out. I, you know, it's very there's blisters, there's bleeding, there's learning. It's excruciating painful while you're nursing, your stomach is contracting cuz your cervix is getting it's like all insane what a woman's body goes through as soon as they have babies. So the last thing on my mind is fucking him again because that's sure. how I got into the circumstance. And as you're watching this, how – because like there's that male instinct to like, oh, she's in pain or she's suffering. Fix the problem. Right. Right? How does it feel to have – because like as someone who – my biggest fear is this, is like not knowing what to do or how to help, right? Mm-hmm. Like what what did you do to ease that guilt? In that instance, I honestly, if I'm being real honest, I don't remember how I. I think if if I'm really being honest, I probably was just like a shoulder to cry on. Okay. I heard her out. There's nothing I can do to fix the pain that she feels from yeah. sore nipples or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I take a feeding. I don't know how. I I, I think was, we also had so many kids that it was different stages of it. Like okay. yeah. the first two, I probably was fucking useless, <laughs> and then the second two with the twins, I was like, oh yeah, no, I need a chip in here. Otherwise, yeah. everyone's life's going to be in shambles, and I, if I don't help in, I'm a fucking deadbeat. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. I think the best thing you can do though is just like take care of all the other bullshit. Like do the man shit. Yeah, like well, no, like like the house. No, do the, the woman laundry. shit. Yeah. The, laundry. the woman shit, like go make sure that I'm in, I'm stuck on this couch for three hours changing diapers and nursing every 25 minutes. Is that laundry switched over? Did you put the dishes away? That was like, the shit. Like, where I, these are like things, I'm yeah. domestic as shit. Or like, hey, I'm going to take the baby for outside and hold him for as long as I can. Take a nap for two yeah. hours. Like rest is going to be, it depends though on the person. Because if you're bottle feeding as well, you could take a feeding and that's help, very helpful. Because you could like, he could sleep. Well, I nurse, and then we switch off. I pump, give him a bottle, and I'll sleep. It's 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 just it's the best shit ever. It's it I it's very it's very crazy. It's a very crazy world to walk into that people don't realize until you do it. This is this is what I think this is what people need. What? What you're talking about right now? Oh, 
is what so many of us I are love st- that you love this so much. Oh, bro, I'm fucking... <laughs> this is the good shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think this is what people like me need, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't know, we don't know yeah. what we don't know. Mm-hmm. And no, we didn't know either. It's all trial and error. It sure, really but is. I believe there was... A, okay, so like... Uh, caveman days right like all the women would nurse together so you had a a group of women around you to like help you through this give tips give advice yep but we live in this like i gotta do it myself no one can tell me anything right i know my own right Right. it's just like no one has anybody to help them or talk to them about it yeah it's very important to get educated too because there's all kinds of ways to get give birth to there's very like home births are very popular and I have friends that have done that and they would never regret it because they because there's also like as soon as the baby comes out there's a lot of things that hospitals do that may not align with your beliefs like as soon as they come out like wiping them off like there's so many things in the world of having a baby from the moment they come from here to here that happen to them that I didn't was ignorant to because I didn't know but I there is a lot I wish I would have known um, but I, I say you, that nerd in you that love to read and do research, this is where you should do that. You guys should together. And then honor what I knew that when I had the Dominic, I knew I wanted an epidural. I knew that I was a wimp with pain, but with the twins, I walked into the hospital, 10 centimeters dilated. Like it was just different. I, me, because I was so seasoned. <laughs> seasoned. Like money. Black people love You're, seasoning. Uh, God damn right. We do. <laughs> I went to a white barbecue the other day. We'll tell that story <laughs> a later. A what? <laughs> it wasn't a cookout. It was a barbecue. Yeah, I was going to say. And how was that? It was trash. <laughs> Not seasoned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Educate yourself. Uh, okay. And, all, and her and sit together and like maybe there's like, you know, a re- there's a reason we sat down here together and this came up because you're actively trying, but I think you need to actively really deep dive into like the whole birthing world, the whole... All of that. It's a lot. It's a lot to consider, and it's a big thing to communicate about that you love doing. First, I need to figure out what's wrong with my dick. You're fine. Right? It takes time. Well, no, I'm, I'm someone who likes to, like, for me, blaming myself for a problem is always the easiest wow, solution. Wow, that's interesting. Right? That's my great Why thing. is it easier? I would think it'd be harder. Like, you'd, no, it's not me. No, it's, it's I It's you. Think- I think uh, not funny, you, but guys in general. I was just having a conversation with a small Chinese lady earlier about <laughs> <laughs> description is necessary. Yeah, gives context. My hundred percent context about what's crazy and what's not. She and I both work sixteen hour days pretty consistently, and people think we're crazy. And I was like, well, I think people who just like don't give a fuck about their life are crazy. Like, I think the dude who like does minimal effort and then can't wait for Friday and Saturday to blow all his money. I think that's crazy. Yeah. Right. right? I think like living like a peasant is crazy. Right. But crazy. Right. So we're having that conversation. And to me, it's crazy to blame your problems on anybody but yourself because you're the only person who can change anything. Right. So to me, the easiest. But that also shows willingness on your part to like, some people are, some men are very stuck in that. Like, it's not my fault. I'm not going to go to testing. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, but Uh-oh. you're probably very open and willing to be like, okay, you, I might be part of it. You give me too much credit. Uh, fat men are filled with self loathing. So it's very easy to blame yourself for your own problems. Right? I do. I make jokes. That's why I self loathe. I, yeah. I, you it's my whole crazy. life. But I get it. Humor, we're funny. <laughs> I'm funny as fuck, dude. I'm so funny. There's a silver line to everything. Mm-hmm. But to me, the easiest solution is to blame myself, mm-hmm. right? Like, what's wrong with me? What What can I be doing? Because mm-hmm. like, okay, hearing about all the stresses and insecurities and things that you're going through, why would I put my wife through the stress and be like, hey, hey, fix your vagina. What the fuck is going on, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, why would I, now that I, thanks to your conversation, I can no longer pretend like I don't know. Yeah. In fact, when I go home tonight with my wife, I'm going to ask her like, hey, what are you insecure about? Yeah. Do you still feel sexy? Yeah. I've never thought to ask her these questions until now. Yeah, yeah. In my head, that's my concern. How do you feel about when we have yeah, sex? Yeah, because she's sexy to me. In right. fact, she's sexier now than when I met her. And wow. you project that feeling that you have for her on her, assuming on her. that she has the same feeling. In my head? Yeah. yeah. I want to, in my head, like even if we don't fuck every night, I want to fuck her every night. 
I said men ovulate every day. Yeah. They really do. There's no point. I'm telling you right now, if my wife texts me right now, I was like, hey, you want to fuck? I'd be like, yeah, I'm on my way. Let's go fuck right now. <laughs> We're at home. We both work from home now. Yeah. At any point. You could fuck. If she came up in and was like, you want to fuck? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> no questions asked. I would never say no to you. But you're so fucking, yeah. you're sexy. So because I see her that way, I just assume. She sees herself She that sees way. herself that Do you, this may, this may be too it. personal. Do you smack her ass at home just because? No, oh. not really. Oh, what oh, do like you mean just because? Like, like during grab. sex or like just because? Just, just walk around <laughs> the house. All the yeah. time. Good. Okay, yeah. get you. Oh, grab get a you. boob. Yeah. Yeah. Just to let you Always. know. I'll do it during sex. Sometimes it's a little awkward. It's yeah. weird. He's but, white. He's <laughs> very white when he does it. <laughs> he I, find like white, I find like white guys come in extremes. Either you season your, like, either you're Gordon Ramsay or you cook without seasoning. Yeah. Either yeah. you're like the best dancer, because like white guys can dance. Mm-hmm. Like some of the best dancers on the earth, salsa, flamingo, or. Aaron. Aaron, you dance? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's not white, though. <laughs> yeah. Not, not anymore. He's you're not, not white, white anymore. anymore. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> No. Y'all are y'all y'all Aaron's are dance, y'all are people of extremes, and I really yeah. like yeah. that about y'all. It's all or nothing. With I you. think white people overrated, but continue. <laughs> Remember we said they earlier the oh, whole yeah. they conversation. Yeah. When people say white people, bitch, I've been to Europe. Italians and Scandinavian people. Italian people aren't white though. What, well, what are they? I don't know. I'm just you joking. see what I'm saying? Yeah, I've met German people. They're white, but there's nothing like the people yeah. from the south of America, right? We call them all motherfuckers white. That's yeah. crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're very different. Black people are more alike. <laughs> Even the way you said it. <laughs> right? Black people are more alike than white people. I've met black people from California to Atlanta. We all do the same <laughs> shit. We all like the I same movies. Of, we have the same music I think taste. White people are looking for their identity too. They're like, am I, am I this? Am I oh, right? That no, no, no I think like, you're a hundred percent right. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I see a white guy, like right now, the mullet mustache thing is in, right? Yeah. And like a couple of years ago, uh, what was the what was that band? They made like the the nineteen forties Americana white guy. Um, oh, um, um, preach, little lion man. You'll oh. never be exactly who. Oh, that shit. Like, you, I don't listen to white folk. people. You don't music. Love music. <laughs> that whole American folk. Like I yeah, feel like, like every few years, white people are white males are looking for like a, a culture to belong to. Like what what does it mean? I, I mean, see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and it's like. One day I wake up and every white guy looks this. I, respect to you because you've always just been macking, which is what I like about you, right? Most of my white friends. Best compliment I could ever receive. <laughs> m- most of my white friends are All like, I want in life is just an on it, like an, an invitation to cook out forever. You do for yeah. my cookouts. Yeah. I don't know how other black people feel yeah, about you, but I know how I feel about you. <laughs> exactly. I can't, always, I can't ask for one to every because I'm, yeah. I'm not going to get invited to every. I hate when people do that. Oh, yeah. this guy's invited to the cookout. I don't know that motherfucker. He invited to my cookout. No, not my cookout. <laughs> Mac invited to my cookout, but I don't know how other. Uh, there's other black men who you might have met who might not want to nope, invite not you. Not me. But, but mine, yeah. you're always invited, right? Because love that. My entire life, you've always just been mm-hmm. the same person I'm talking to now, right? Mm-hmm. Same with my boy Cake, JJ. Mm-hmm. Always been the same dudes, Aww, right? JJ. The okay, realest one, good, man. Yeah. my guy. But like, I have, again, I think this goes back to the white guy extreme where you're either like, one. Of the, this is going to sound so bad on camera. <laughs> I love I love racist Southern white guy. You do? Why? Like, because he knows who he is? Because that motherfucker <laughs> knows what he is. Bro, my daddy was racist. My pappy was racist. My great, great grandpappy was racist. Yeah. Fuck you. I don't give a like. I love that man. Really? Oh, oh my he's god! Just so secure because he knows who he is, and yeah. like I know if I'm hanging out with him, I I already know what he what his get down is. Yeah. Hey, brother, we cool. But if a fight breaks out right now between white people and black I'm people, sides. I know who I'm choosing. <laughs> so I know, right? Yeah. What I feel what I feel uncomfortable with is the is the white guy where I'm like. Are you going to stab me in the back? Yeah, I don't know. See, I, I don't know. I would take issue with that because I'm taking the other side because I know whose side is going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we, we're... We're done. We're <laughs> let me, let me take a sip real quick because we're getting into the good yes. shit. <laughs> Before we get super dude, I want to like touch on some lighthearted shit. Not that you would ever get canceled because you're uncancelable. I am. I'm uncancelable. You're too lovable. I know. It's but weird, like, right? One, one thing I don't think you like, and I, this is probably by design because I don't think you ever really want the credit for it, but like, and I don't want to throw the word philanthropist out there because it sounds like so fluffy, but you truly are like a philanthropist. And I I was playing around with the way that I would approach this, but like, you're like, you're not a board member of a, of a charity. You're more of like a Batman or a Robin hood, like 
robbing the rich and going to the poor. Like you'll see some lady in Walmart going through shit and buy all her groceries. And maybe not that exact scenario, but that no, type that. of thing. Right. <laughs> or like no exactly Raise money for schools. You'll you'll find some teachers who don't have enough money to buy their classroom supplies and you'll take them to Costco and get everything that they need. That's amazing. Man, you, you'll sponsor a you kindergarten like, classroom. Are you following me around? Because I literally I haven't posted the video yet, but like is I that just, one you just did? I literally this this girl named Destiny. Destiny, if you watch this for some reason, I was just reason, a made up scenario. But I literally did it. She reached out to me. She messaged me. She goes, "Hey, I just started at the Christian Academy up north. Uh, our school doesn't have funds for my class. I've been watching you for a while. I know you help teachers. Can you help me put my class together?" And I was like, "Bet, bro, come meet me." Wow. And I, I I I told her, "I'm just meeting you for lunch to talk about it." And then I did this whole video where I tricked her and I was like, hey, guess what? All the stuff you've asked for, I've already bought your whole Amazon wow. list. It's being shipped to your house right now. Like right. when you it get home, so good. when you get home, it's gonna get it's gonna be wow. there, kind of thing, right? Like I don't uh philanthropist makes me think of like what like rich dudes yeah. do to like it has like such a negative connotation to it. To me it does, because I know that like, okay, um the greatest donator in the history of the NAACP, do you know who it is? No. Probably some w- weird the white racist guy. white dude from yeah. the Clippers. Oh, well, he was wasn't him. white. He was Jewish. So let's give but him. But he married a black girl, so it was okay. The racist Jewish <laughs> owner of the Clippers, Donald is Sterling. Donald, Ster- yeah. Donald Sterling is the greatest donator to the is history he really? of the. Yes, he's donated more money to the NAACP than any human being. Wow. Giving money away to rich people means nothing. I don't give money to homeless people. I ask them their name. They don't want your money. They want you to treat them like a human. Yeah. What's your name? Good to meet you, brother. I'm Brandon. What's your name? Joe? Right? Because that's what they need. I don't like philanthropists. Like, I, this is how I know my wife's a real one. I told her when I was dead broke. I told her. I told my wife this when I was dead broke. When I was damn near homeless still. I said, I'm going to get rich one day and give all my money away. And you and I are going to die broke. Are you okay with that? And she was like, Sure. She wow. thought I was joking, and now she gets mad at me because you're giving it away. I do that. She wants but to keep that's that beautiful. Purse. I when I was poor, you use your own money. Yes. yes. Wow. Oh, but you he, don't. He is his own money. No, but I mean, like, you don't like. There's no like. Uh, we're helping this teacher out. Do you want a Venmo kind of thing? The Sometimes people, the right? people of Las Vegas are hurting right now. Yeah. Right. The people of Las Vegas are hurting right now. So yeah. Maybe once a year I'll do like a fundraiser or something. But, but the wow, people of Vegas are hurting right now. That's amazing that you do that. Who am I to ask for their money? They're suffering, yeah. right? Um, I make enough money now that like my mortgage is paid. My wife gets to buy stupid shit off Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't need Priorities. Bro, I wear the same jeans from Target that I've been buying. Some of my jeans are eight years old. I don't have a use for money. Yeah. I grew up poor. I lived poor most of my life. I realized at a young age, I don't really need money to be happy, right? I, yeah. I, don't, I don't need that. So I give it to people because it makes them happy. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't give it to people. I give it to kids. Yeah. Kids don't deserve to be poor. Yeah. Like, if you're poor and you're 30, bitch, you deserve to be poor. Mm-hmm. You had several opportunities between zero and 30 to change your stars. But kids don't deserve to be poor. Yeah. Kids don't deserve to have hunger. And like, yeah. that, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. yeah. So this is a true story. Anytime I was suffering as a kid in Vegas, Vegas always had my back. Wow. I needed a job, and all of a sudden, a job opens up at this nightclub. And, oh, surprise, the guy who's hiring went to high school with me. I have a job now at the wind that I probably don't deserve, and I'm making a ton of money yeah. out of nowhere. Oh, I, 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 I get fired from the wind. Oh, look, a job around the corner from my cheap studio apartment happens to open up and oh god the guy hiring once again knows me from some random vegas has always supported me always Mm -hmm. from my friends to everyone in vegas has always shown me love that's beautiful and i finally have the opportunity to give that shit back and to me that's the rules of vegas everybody who lives here knows the rules of vegas you give that shit back yeah you look out for you give it back you give it you give it away you give it to the people who make this city work Mm -hmm. and it's only fair. And so I I thank you. Calling me a philanthropist is like calling me smart. I think it greatly overrates what I do. Mm -hmm. I like Batman. Yeah. I like Batman. I like, I like just giving the shit away. Yeah. I do publicize some of it because 
Well, it's you, important you said to bring it on awareness. a long time. You're like, I hate doing this, but I feel like if I need you because other people need to also go do this too. Yeah, it's like awareness. I remember it was you were at Central Christian Church. Yeah. You're like, these kids need fucking backpacks. They need backpacks. And I can only, I'm, I brought, you brought a whole truckload, literally a truckload. Yeah. And we're like, we need a hundred more backpacks, 5,000 more backpacks. Dude, I, this is a true story. I just bought $1,300 worth of backpacks. Wow. And we, we, we got what, maybe a maybe hundred kids? What is that? Yeah. yeah. Nothing. What does that mean? It's three classes. What does that? What does what does a hundred backpacks mean? Straight up. What, what does that mean? No, it's true. I think it's crazy that we live in a world where it's okay to post degenerate shit. Mm -hmm. I can make rap songs about killing people, hitting women. I can be a whore and go online and talk about all kind of disgusting shit, and all of us are totally cool with it. We've all just accepted that this is normal. But you go online and you film yourself giving a homeless guy food. Everybody's like, oh, he's just doing it for clicks. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can be a degenerate. You're not doing it all. I can be evil for clicks, but helping a homeless guy for clicks. Now, yeah. now this yeah. is – now they've got people tricked. They've got people completely yeah, baffled. It's backwards. It's ass backwards. And I just won't – I no matter what people say, I won't I – won't, I, I'm going to keep showing people more of the stuff that yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm tired of hiding it because I think people need to see it. Yeah. I do. I do. I, it, it, it embarrasses me holding a camera in front of a teacher's face and being like, hey, surprise, I bought all your stuff. It does feel gross. But Also, it needs, you, somebody needs to bring awareness to this. Somebody needs to bring awareness yeah, I don't to think, it. And I was telling Mackin on the way here. I'm like, and this, I, I remember you were just on a podcast and you were talking about the funding for CCSD is like what they're doing. I know. Fuck those people. I, so... <laughs> But I was saying it, it's very strange because I taught at a school. I did my student teaching and taught there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's in a very nice part of town. Mm -hmm. Very wealthy families go there. All, all, but if you look at it, 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 speaking, it is a wealthier area. Summerlin, they, this is a school in Summerlin. So I was walking around that school. It's been there for 20 years now. There is leaks. There are, there are like a, AC goes out. AC goes out. There's a lot of structural issue uh, issues that the administration has to seek, like can't go to CCSD and say these are our problems. Can't like I, I mean I may be speaking out of I'm not very not, intelligent no, where money not. is being allocated, but I do remember witnessing these things and I remember a, a government official coming into the school and the principal going like I need to talk to them because I'm hoping they'll give us some money to fix the leaky like you could see you know like the, when there's the ring and the, the water's leaking through the roof but because I think of the location it, it's not it, it, I, I don't know if this is true or not but I think because of the location I don't it's not really realize how much these schools need my niece goes to Coronado Anybody in Vegas knows what Coronado is. You know the location of Coronado. You know that it's surrounded by Seven Hills and Anthem and yeah. all the richy rich neighborhoods. My niece just starts going there this year. I got to buy her hundreds of dollars in school supplies and band equipments. And she's going to one of the best schools in the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's like for the kids going to El Dorado? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. What do you think it's like going to the kids in the hood? What do you think... I, a lot of funding does get allocated to Title I schools, though, because they do need the most, but not enough. I know that. I know that's not enough, and it's always just probably the bare minimum of what they have to get. It's the bare. I believe you. All the backpacks I raised went to a Title I school. All the money I raised goes to a Title I When I talk about Title I schools in CCSD, yeah. I'm not another Joe Schmo talking out of his ass. I'm not another dude who's just yelling at the fucking moon. I know what I'm talking about because yeah. I have to see it. Yeah. I throw a party at the end of every kindergarten year that I film for people and I bring extra food because the parents Sorry. are too embarrassed to tell the staff that they don't have, they food, don't to have food to eat. Yeah. They're too embarrassed to tell the teachers yeah. We depend on your school lunches to feed these kids. Yeah. They're too embarrassed. So That's I bring crazy. extra food for these kids. That's amazing. I bring extra. I bought a thousand. Because you see it. 
Yes. Yes. And when I tell these parents, hey, dude, listen, real talk. If you're in, listen, I'll take the I'll take the food and go put it in your car for you if you don't want to be seen. And I'll carry it to their cars for them. Wow. I'm not just I know you're not bullshitting. I'm not just some fucking dude. Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying is right. They no one's we treat education in Vegas like it's like these kids are supposed to be dumb. Oh, they're in Vegas. Who cares? Like why why is that? What for what reason? Why why are our kids not as good as your kids? Mm -hmm. Why does CCSD have all this funding, all this money, and we can't get simple shit fixed? Yeah. Why does an asshole like me have to raise money for schools that are supposed to be getting the most help? Yep. Why? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And no one wants to – do you no. know how many teachers message me? I won't expose them because they've asked me to keep their names – I have dozens and dozens of teachers who have messaged me everything that you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, you want to come on Tamara and talk about it? No. No. Yeah. What are you afraid of? Oh, man, they'll, they'll fire me. I'll lose my benefits. I, I need this job. They'll, I, I won't ever get to work for the district again. Yeah. They're afraid. Yeah. They're afraid. You can't blame them. Maybe you can, but like they're worried about their own too. Somebody has to care more about the kids than themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I saying. never thought it was going to be me. What changed? Did you did you visit a school? Was it your niece during what COVID? During when COVID. everyone was so cool with these kids, oh, these kids will be fine. They'll bounce no. back. No, we see we firsthand everybody. experienced. Brother, I was that kid who school was my only. I didn't want to go home. Mm -hmm. Home meant all the things that come with poverty, all the. Anger, all the problems, all the stress. I didn't want to go home. I love school. Yeah. I know what these kids feel like. I know that school is the only sanctuary for a lot of these kids. Yep. I know it. I'm not just some – I know what they feel. Yeah. And seeing COVID and some of these kids, think about it. If you're a broke kid in an abusive household and school is like your eight hours of like – Breathing. And now you're stuck at home with this household mm. every yeah. day. Yeah. Around these people every day, no outlet. Yeah. And everyone's just like, "Oh, these kids will be fine." You're because that's and how many kids were just left home with yeah. no alone, nothing, nobody. I mean, like it's sad. Yeah. No, I. Understand. Do you know how many kids? If you're watching this, do you know how many kids don't eat when school gets out? I know you guys don't want to talk about it. No one wants to look at it. Everyone, we treat it like they do in India. If you ever know anything about India, uh, being poor, being it's like a profession. And the people in India will walk past a homeless person because in their world, they deserve, that's, where, that's just their class. That's their station in life. Right. And that's how we treat poor kids. Like we just, it's easier to pretend that they don't exist. But or I, they're thinking ignorantly that there's some no, company or corporation we, that's feeding we them. We don't want to think about them at all. Right. Oh, well. We don't. We just want to put our heads in. That's why most people won't donate to these causes because if they donate, it makes them have to think about it. Mm. So they don't want to think about it. Yeah. I, I can't not think about yeah, it. Yeah, I understand. I go to food events where we throw away $1,000 worth of food because – they just made it for us to film. And all I can think about is we could have fed so many kids. Yep. I can't not think about it. Yeah. You know? So anyways, I, I mean, don't. But I, at least you're talking about it. You're bringing up the uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations and things that people don't want to talk about. And you're shedding light on it. So just like the camera in the teacher's face, it's bringing awareness to something that is turned a blind eye to. Yes. And I think it's wonderful. And I love that. And I, I, I which brings me like if you when you do have because ch you, you're going to yeah. have a child children, um, what does school look like for you? Oh, homeschool, homeschool, I was, I was homeschool. Gonna, yep, homeschool unless I make enough money to afford private school. I can't send my kid. Like my niece goes to a went to a very prestigious middle school, mm -hmm. and I walk in. She's she's twelve years old. And they're teaching this kid about racial justice. And I'm like, bro, she's 12. My kid's not racist. Yeah. 
She doesn't know what race is. She doesn't give a fuck if her friend is black, Hispanic. Eight. She don't give a fuck. She's 12. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what are you teaching these kids? Why is this acceptable for yeah. you to teach my kid? Like, why are you teaching these kids this? Mm-hmm. Right. And so I can't, I can't put my, I, I yeah. can't, I can't, I, I, I being honest. I no, can't. no, I, I, I completely I, get it, dude. I, I understand. I we it's, do. I mean, we just went through that whole scenario, and we're still figuring it out. How do you talk to a? We got one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, figuring it out. How do you guys, as parents? And I'm, if, if, again, I, I never know what's a comfortable question to ask. You're right? fine. But how do you guys talk to your kids about things that we never had to think about as middle schoolers? Yeah. Politics, race, sexuality. Gender. But it's coming like, up. What? It's coming up on their feed if they're in social media too. Yeah, it's everywhere. So, it, and it's right in your face. Like people are very opinion. If you have opinion, you could just put it on the internet and it goes viral. Like, but you can take your kid's device away. Totally, you can't take, take school them. away too. If their teacher is having a lesson during right. Black History Month and telling your white kid that they're bad people, yeah. What the? F- what are you supposed to do about that? Yeah, I know that's. Well, it is. It does bring up a lot of conversation and awareness because we did go through this with Dominic. But um, I mean, it, but it also it, they're touching on things that have shaped the world we live in today. Like if it wasn't for the history that we've been through, we. I, I mean, I think it, yeah. I think it makes and it's all also of our putting t- the spotlight on the black kid. That's like what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. I'm just a- <laughs> I'm, I had to drink at a different a, fountain. <laughs> well, well, no, yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, it has, it's just shedding light on this shit that is very important and very part of our history. But like, I feel like it puts those, I taught this in second grade. Yeah. And it was very uncomfortable for me to teach it. But why? No one taught me. My gr- Okay. My grandpa, God bless his soul. His grandpa was a slave. Right. I never learned about any of that shit. My grandpa didn't talk to me about that, none of that. He never talked to me about it. In his opinion, he's like, why? You're not a slave. Why, why do I need to teach you about anything? You live a great life, mm. right? I want you to be a normal-ass kid. Why am I going to, right? And I, I may be selfish here. No, I don't think you're selfish. And let me jump in real, real quick. Yeah. Which, in theory, from my perspective, would be the most appropriate conversation. You being black, coming from your black grandfather – Talking about his slave grandfather, his right? His experience. There's yeah. all experiential things there versus some random white lady in fourth grade teaching you about Black History Month. But it te- – okay. Um, do we teach – do we teach British kids that the French once defeated and conquered them? Do they? Do, do we teach – German you say, kid. did they do no do do no. do do they do like no is that you something? learn about the history of the yeah, world yeah oh I see what but you're saying we don't raise other kids as victims yeah oh I see we don't do we tell Irish kids oh let me tell you a little lassie in 1930 uh, in America they treated you like garbage no we don't victimize them do we yeah. tell yeah. Italian kids hey Italian kids when you first moved here they treated you like garbage. No, we just let them be kids, right? Yeah. And again, this is where I'm being selfish. I think they victimize all little kids. They teach, they teach black kids that, hey, you're nothing but a victim and you've always been a victim. And then they teach the, the white kids, hey, you've always been a, a, bad, a yeah. bad person. Mm-hmm. Who wins there? Right. Yeah. Who wins there? I, I don't get it. I, um, I don't get it. Yeah. I just don't get it. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. We never. You're not racist. I'm not racist. No one taught me not to be racist. No one taught you not to be racist. We just realized we don't hate each other. Yeah. I didn't need a teacher to tell me like you can't lead. You can't legislate loving another person. Either you do or you don't. Right. I think all you can do is teach kids to like. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know the answer. I just don't think it's right. Yeah. Yeah. I struggle with that because, like, I mean, I'm not, struggle maybe the wrong word because you're exposing me to new thoughts that I haven't really thought before. Like, yeah, I think that there's obviously a lot of good intentions from some people, right? Whether they're quote allies or they're, yeah, they're teaching empathy or they're teaching other people's perspectives of what white people may or may not have ever experienced 
versus what other black kids in their classes might have experienced versus what their grandparents experienced. I feel like, okay. but I think where you're going, it's more systemic than that than it is in like the yeah. one-to-one relationships. Like if you you're, said. if you're, um, and again, I, I, go, I go back to my who is they. Yeah. If you're someone whose family just moved here to America from Germany or Sweden or Europe or anywhere in Europe, your, your, your family wasn't slave owners. What, why are we teaching these kids about mm. slavery? They had nothing yeah. to do with it, right? If so you're a white kid. The curriculum is really the, is, is the curriculum, but it's across the board. It's not just in Vegas. It's yeah. everywhere. This is, yeah. the, this is Las Vegas. Yeah. There were no slaves here. Why are we teaching these kids uh, for what? Mm. Right? Like maybe, okay, again, I didn't grow up in the deep south. Maybe in somewhere like Georgia, right, where some of these kids are like descendants of, and even then, w- I just why, don't understand yeah. why. I why? feel like it'd be more beneficial if the kids within their own classrooms would like learn talk about, the about good where things they're in the from. History. Yeah, where's your family from? Where you know, if you don't know if you were, where are your grandparents from? Yeah, let's talk about the things you do yeah. within your family. And at the very least, at the appropriate age, maybe. I don't At know. the yeah. appropriate age, age where your 12, brain can a twelve year old, a, a second grader could not comprehend what I was justify. Teaching. No, they're yeah. just my niece. Okay, it made me so happy. Uh, it made me so happy. I went and picked up her friends a year ago. I, I've never met her friends. You know, eighth graders. They're very girls. Yeah. They're just very private. I went to pick up her and her little friends, and my niece has nothing but black friends. Nothing but black friends. I went to pick up her. I went to pick her up from Green Valley Ranch. Yeah. And I was like, where's Kylie? Oh, shit. She got nothing <laughs> but black friends. And I said, Kylie, I didn't know those were friends. And she's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, so you like hang out with the black girls? And she's like, no, they're just my friends. Oh, right. wow. I said, oh, look at you teaching me a lesson. Shit, right? I'm here. Look at me. I'm seeing race. Proud of you because you're choosing to hang out with black <laughs> yeah. girls. You're not choosing shit. They're just your friends. Yeah, they're right. just people you connect with. She doesn't even see that mm-hmm. shit, right? So I'm with you. I don't know what the age is, right? But I know I it's have not. No tw- idea. What, I know yeah. it's not twelve. No. I know it's not twelve. I know in middle school it's not that. Yeah, or maybe there's levels to of it. Like you, you teach certain things at a certain. I don't fucking know. I don't know. know. But to answer your question, homeschool. Homeschool. Yeah, I figured. Homeschool. My yeah. kid's gonna be a weird little homeschooled weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I think kids, homeschooling like, yeah, is not weird anymore. Not exactly. Like, I, I completely would have been that person 10, 20, 30 years ago. Oh, you're one of the weird homeschool kids. Not weird at all anymore. Yeah. I don't think so. Do you least. think the social media allows kids to kind of socialize anywhere? No. I no. think I think experiences like doing shit with your kids and letting them have, like, create friend groups. I think like, a lot I think of the if problem I had is this- the isolation with the, the isolation with homeschool kids, too. They just are home. They're yeah. with their families. They're only seeing this or that. I think they need to have friend groups and experiences yes. where they where they have. And that's so possible, like so easily. Yeah, I mean, I, I you don't need to go to a Clark County school district school to be a normal person. I don't think so either. I right. think to me, again, I don't think this is a radical opinion, but I think people see it as such. I think the only value in school nowadays is socialization. To me, I think any valuable lesson, we now have enough internet knowledge that it it can be taught at home. Yeah, a lot of it too can be taught through sports too. Like collectively, like hundred percent. There are like Vivian, our daughter, just got in trouble because she was she was with a group of kids that were making bad choices. Maybe she wasn't doing the same thing that they were. You make it sound like they were doing drugs. They no, were they running were running down the hall. <laughs> See? <laughs> she said bad decisions. I was well, like, was they, she smoking they weed? Were, See, the, that's no. a, they were running down there. the hall. They were running when they should have walked. They should have been walking. <laughs> bad she, decisions sounds like drugs. And she got clumped in with the kids. She was speed walking, but you know, she got clumped in with the kids that were running and she had a consequence Hanging for that. Hanging out with the, rat, the wrong crowd. But it was the a ra- very big, it was a <laughs> very big walkers. learning thing for her because like he said, if you're sitting there and all your friends are smoking cigarettes and you're just sitting there, you're going to be part of that. Like it's like, you gotta deal with life's the not fair. but you can put your kids in sports where they're not thinking of just themselves. They're, they have yeah. a team. Like, I don't know. I don't know why that came up, but I'm like, I'm thinking uh, like, cause you were talking about guys. This. So the biggest, me and my wife don't argue. We've been together too long. Mm-hmm. We have got most of the kinks worked out, but the most 
long lasting issue in our relationship is her natural resistance to consequences. I call it the courtroom where every time she does something wrong and I try to call it out, we instantly are transported to a courtroom where I must defend my case against her. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's gotten better at over time where the court cases don't last as long. Right. Yeah. But it's still a courtroom. Can you give me an example? The other night. Um, we're going over, she's my operations manager for my social media. So you work, work together in a way. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. And I asked her to write an email to an important client and she writes a very like piss poor email. Right. And. I read it and I said, what do you do? What is this? She goes, well, no. I said, I don't mean to put this in a mean way, but my clients are worth five times what your clients are. Yeah. Right. And I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those husbands who like holds money over her head. No. Again, she gets to spend all, anything of mine she wants, she gets to It's have. just holding this client in regard, a different regard. It's just like, hey. Your clients pay this much. My clients pay five times this much. Quick. Right? And instead We're of just being like, about. my bad, I was wrong, she instantly took me to the courtroom. Right? She defended herself. Instantly. Mm-hmm. Even though she was dead in the wrong. When we were younger, the courtroom would take 20 minutes for me to plead my case. Now it takes like two to three minutes. But I expressed to her, I said, hey, as a man, going to this level of emotion with you hurts me. Men don't like to go to this place. This is not fun for us. Girls, you guys can like have emotional outbursts or, mm-hmm. and, and just go back to normal, right? For yeah. us, that, that shit hurts, right? Mm-hmm. Having to like prove, having to like beat, I'm a good debater. Having to like beat her down with words doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. right? And now my 14-year-old niece has been living with us for four years. And I found she's the same way. Mm-hmm. And it's not being wrong about big stuff. It's tiny little things like your, your daughter running through the hallway. Yeah. How did your daughter react to the consequences of getting in trouble for something small? Okay. So there's a lot of things going on here. The best advice I think we ever got in therapy was marriage is the death of your ego. So when you get married, your ego should go out the door, both people, because it's an us now. Yes. Okay. Um, so that was really hard for us. We, we, because we got married so young and then we had children together. You, we, we didn't fight very often when we were dating. We had little things cause I was drunk and stupid, but like, Kids, trivial stuff. Kids bring out things, awaken parts of you mm-hmm. you didn't realize were there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you now you talk about Vivian because I'm trying. Vivian's Vivian's a nine year old little girl. She she did not handle the consequence of her actions well at all. She pleaded her case. Yes, she felt unjustly uh, grouped in invalidated yes she felt that she wasn't running she should have been secluded from the group the privilege of being a a buddy shouldn't have been removed from her and she was very 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 strongly opinioned about that to point where she was crying all weekend about it yeah and it became a very big thing i would go to bat for her and say to her teacher like this is how vivian feels but there's no lesson in that for my daughter because these are two different things. Like my daughter is a little girl learning that life is not fucking fair. Sure. And so, go ahead. I have found, and this is, I'm in a unique situation where my wife and the kid we're raising are twins. <laughs> They're twins, dude. We, I literally will have the same lectures with my niece that I do my wife. Wow. 
They're twins. They like the same shit. They react to things the same way. Yeah. So our arguments now carry a, a little person who takes things in a better way. It's like my wife has a mirror Mm-hmm. Yeah. To all of her actions. Yeah. She gets to see how how they play out in a, her form. In her form. Mm-hmm. So the she gets to see me and her have a disagreement. And then she gets to see how my niece handles that same disagreement because again, they're the same person. Mm-hmm. And it's really become like not a conflict, but it's opened my eyes to being like, wait a minute. One of you is this age. One of you is this age. Why are we reacting? Well, women right? get defensive too. Well, okay, everybody that's, that's, does. That, no, no, yeah. no, 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 not everybody. Not everybody. I, I mean, he does. They, they, no, I don't get I, defensive. No, you get I'm not defensive, defensive right if now. If I criticize you, you get defensive. I'm, uh, that was the irony. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to say men. I don't get defensive. Okay. You heard? I'm. There's nothing you can say about me. That I wouldn't assume is true. Like if you wrote the email and it wasn't the way she thought it. If she criticizes me on something. You're like, okay, I'll fix it. I take it. that to heart. Okay. Right? I Har- do. I take it to heart. Even if I have this motto where there's no value in winning. Me, me defeating That's her good. and being right. Where, where does that get me? Yeah. How do, how do I, what, what's, their value is in losing. So I'll lose even if I'm right. Right? But I, even my grandma, my grandma was 83 when she died. To her deathbed, she didn't want to get in trouble for anything. Mm-hmm. We would catch her eating snacks, even though she was diabetic and they would kill her. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, oh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> Dude, you're 83 years old. Take the consequences of your yeah, actions. Have the Twinkie, grandma. Why do you guys not like getting in trouble so much? Men take getting in trouble as a sign of like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm a rebel. I'm I think different. because we feel like we're doing like, we went through this when we were starting the podcast together. He would criticize things that I did, like visually, not talking, mm-hmm. but it was more so like uh, editing and stuff. And it would, oh, it, yeah. would, it, would, it would fuck up or we would have the same kind of situation. It's not that I, I mean, I can't speak for her because I really do believe that a lot of things that she's getting ignited or uh, um, activated by are, it's, an, it's something deeper. Do you guys go to therapy? No, I'm therapy. No, I'm just saying like, or like, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff came up in, and I, 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 it's hard to explain. We, we, we've been to therapy for a long time, five years, longer, longer because, Seven. because we like it and we're learning and we are better people because of it. And when we had kids, shit got hard. Yeah. Things got rocky. Yeah. It became tit for tat. It became things for the, like that and it, and it was it, we didn't go because there was a huge problem we went because you didn't want it to be maintenance. a huge problem yeah maintenance and I think we've become better fighters and in, in those situations communicators and empathetic and understanding yeah. perspective because I yeah. realized why the things he was doing were hurting me and making me igniting this thing in me that I would get defensive did you feel like okay and the word I want to key in on is defensive yeah. Because for you to go on the defense, and this is, again, if my wife is listening to this, she's going to laugh because I've said this phrase a hundred times to her. For you to be defensive assumes that I'm on the attack. There's it not, has nothing to do with you, actually. No. Uh, uh, okay. But it doesn't. It, only, it has everything to do with how, how she – my thing was is – the thing I constantly would tell myself is you're not doing enough. You're not enough. You're, you're not doing, like, it's not, you're not, you're not doing enough. And so when he would criticize like a graphic or something, I'm like, well, what the fuck? I sat here for five hours. I think it looks great. Like. Do you feel like because you're hard on yourself, it feels like, an add-on when he's also hard on you? In that circumstance, yes. It's like, a, it's like I... And you also, put all this work in and it's 
all for naught because I don't, I'm not appreciative to, appreciative of it. Yeah, and it, but it really does come down to her own hurt. It's women get defensive, men. I he gets very defensive. It's it's definitely an ego thing. It's definitely a thing where you're like, I have I know I've done the best I could, and now you're shitting on it. But that's also life. Like if I was working a job right. and my boss was like, this isn't good enough. I have to learn to can take it. You know what I'm saying? In men's world, we only criticize the things I love, right? So, like, I never see it as an attack, but mm -hmm. she still gets defensive. And I always say the same thing. I love you. I would never attack you. Why are you getting defensive, mm -hmm. right? Defense assumes attack. Why are you putting your walls up when there's no one trying to, right? We're, yeah. we're supposed to be vulnerable with each other. The walls are supposed to be gone, yeah. right? And for you, it's very easy for you to do that. Well, no, it's well, yes and no. My whole life is criticism as a man. My whole life is criticism, yeah. right? Like playing football, criticism, playing any sport, criticism. Yeah, you grew up with that. It's normal for me. My, my, the world doesn't talk to me like a valuable person. The world shits on me until I'm valuable. So criticism is all I know, right? Mm -hmm. If you were... I know you're not, but if you're the hoe you joked about earlier, I would never, I don't criticize hoes. You're a hoe. What's it to criticize? <laughs> you, you've chose, like, what, what's it to criticize with a hoe? I don't mm -hmm. care about you. Mm -hmm. You don't even care about you. So what's it to criticize, right? Mm -hmm. I only criticize the things that I love. I criticize schools because I, I think they, they're good. So I try to explain this to her. So you're doing it in, as a form, as a, an, an affection it, of love. The greatest act of love I can give another person is caring about them. Mm -hmm. Caring about them enough to be like, hey man, I think you can do better. That's the greatest act of caring that I possess. You know I don't give a fuck about you when I don't give a shit right, what you, you do. Care, you don't yes. say anything. I don't give a shit. Hey brother, you want to go drink and party? But how on does Thursday? she feel? That's how you show and probably do you receive love that way, criticism? I, I've never said this out loud before, but no one gives a fuck about me. Do you feel that way, really? Yeah. People don't say anything to me anymore because they want something but from me. But do you feel like love is saying things or do you feel like love is like her, you know, like cleaning the house or an act of love is like prioritizing your whatever it is like putting you first like oh no i don't i don't i don't worry if she loves me my 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 wife loves me beyond all recognition mm -hmm. when she, when i when she met me i was nothing mm -hmm. nobody she had a great job she supported us yeah that woman loves me beyond all reason right i don't want to hurt her feelings yeah but you're but i want her to be better Right. So, have you said that exactly to her? We're, I'm a fantastic communicator. And how does she the right receive tone. that? I've worked on my tone. So I sent this video the other day. It was some funny wife, like my husband's usually right, not insinuating that, but like my husband's usually right, but he 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 never uses the right tone. I've learned tone. Yeah. Tone makes a big difference. When I was younger, I would talk to my father. Right. I'll get real angry. Talk down. Talk down to her. Yeah. I've learned tone. Mm -hmm. I purposely go. I'm going to talk to you like this so that you know. Look, I'm using my calm voice. I, I'm watching my tone. I'm saying everything the right way. I'm not attacking you. Please don't get defensive. I just want you to be better. So defensiveness bothers you. Yes, because we're getting so fucking no, deep here. I'm just saying defensiveness, I'm sorry. defensiveness I, I, bothers you. Her defensiveness, defensiveness is a reaction. Because it makes me feel like an attacker. Yeah, but you're not. And she knows you're not attacking her. She just is something in her being criticized Triggered. is hurting her. Why do girls at all ages from the age of – it's like a natural instinct. You know how if you go to punch a guy, he naturally like – a little kid doesn't need to taught how to like mm – -hmm. it's just a natural male instinct to be like dodge, fucking whatever. It's just natural. Why is it from the age of four to 94 – it is your natural instinct to take it to a courtroom and argue your case. I don't know. What I about don't really? Getting... I mean, you do until you don't. I guess. Like I, I don't know. You need just like <coughs> be, I think my biggest thing is being understood. My perspective being understood is okay. enough for me. 
Like, if you understand where I'm coming from. That's, I, I think, a good point is, like, understanding her perspective and her intentions. While her actions might not be where they, they yeah. line up with what you're expecting, the intentions are in the right place. And there was a misstep somewhere along the way. A miscommunication. Yeah. Like, it, like he even said, like, that whole situation with the graphics and whatever. He's like, I'm not taking away from your effort and work and your intention, but this is just not good. So... Maybe I should lead with a compliment before the criticism. So a teacher thing is compliment, compliment criticism, compliment. compliment. That's how I used to tell girls to fuck guys in college. <laughs> Sorry, the opposite. That's how I used to teach Worked guys ways, to fuck ladies. girls in college. Yeah. yeah compliment, no, compliment sandwich. But I do really feel like it's a deeper thing too. Some women, like I, I just. Speaking I do, of sandwiches. Okay. He had, he's been dying to ask you this. He's been asking. This is such a great transition. I know he's chan. He he tra- transitioned. All right, we're gonna get some, DM me. We'll, some very, we'll get we'll get lunch. Very low level okay. questions here. I just want to <laughs> rapid fire these. Okay, tacos, burgers, pizza. Go. Which one? Burgers, tacos, pizza. Oh, oh sorry, I, I oh. misspoke. Which one? Tacos, burgers, or pizza? Which one? Burgers. I'm a burger man to the death of me. From where? Oh, you're fucking me. Uh, yes. Expensive or cheap? Cheap. Fat Boy Burger, $4 uh, Monster Burger, best burger in Vegas. Ooh, okay. Uh, favorite rapper of all time? Kanye West. He's not a rapper. He's a pop star. That's correct, you should, no, it's the correct answer. Why don't you just say favorite? Raiders, Knights, or Aces? Knights. Knights. Right answer also. What would you say? Music. You don't have to say rapper. I don't listen to Death he Cab likes, for Cutie. He likes, only, <laughs> I would have said Nelly. Do you still? That's, a real, <laughs> 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 That's the realest shit I ever heard. The Knights, bro. I would give up every sports team in the world for the Knights. Knights. I would. Aces is creeping up, though. The Golden Knights made my city happy when we were miserable, and yeah. I'll, I'll love them forever. Yes. 100%. Um, favorite date night spot? A park at Bartlett Park, swinging on swings. Ooh, that's cute. Oh, I've never yeah. done that. Yeah, until the roaches show up. Um, go to late night drunk food. Herbs and rye. Ooh. Nice. Bougie drunk food. Um, and then this is one a little bit deeper. Not that we haven't got fucking deep enough. <laughs> Dude, but your like, wife's a dancer. If you could, <laughs> yeah, she'd kill me in my sleep if I did something wrong. Um, if you could like collab or do something in the business world, food world, f- philanthropy, don't want to say the P word. No. Um, yeah. any, anything in your aspirations, if you could team up with them or they, for lack of a better term, who would it be and why? Oh shit. Um, if I could team up with anybody doing what, what would we team up to do? It doesn't matter. It like, doesn't matter. If you want to like, if you want to be the next Caldwell banker, if you want to be the next in and out, if you want to like, what would it be? I would – oh, that's a good fucking question, dude. Um, I would go back to making music. Does that count? Oh, yeah. We can be artsy. I would go back to making music again. Really? Yeah. I used, to be, I used to be a pretty good rapper. Like, yeah, I used to be genuinely a good rapper. Uh, but that's you, really amazing. Yeah. If I could do anything, like if I could like choose mm-hmm. – I would just go back to me. Every time a rapper hits me up or follows we're gonna me, we're going to put your SoundCloud link in the, the description. No, here. I would never tell. I, it's still <laughs> out there. I listen to it when I'm like, when I'm like sad and depressed. I play my own music, and it helps me like remember that time. Get out, out of it. it. Yeah, but I'll never Beautiful. share it with anybody. Yeah. Is there something about that time you were doing it that makes it so sentimental? And the like- best thing about art is it's a time travel because you get to remember how you felt. Then, yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's probably you why you listen to your own yeah. music when you're in a bad place because it takes you back to that. A different person it allows yeah. you to step outside yourself. You get Sim- to, yeah, you get to remember. I, I, I say things on my songs that I totally disagree with now as an adult 12, 15 years later. But that's life. But that's life. I would hope so. Most people don't remember how they felt at 22. Right. No. I have a catalog of exactly how I felt. That's crazy. You could argue that you shouldn't feel the way you should at, oh my at God. 22 in some my, ways. The, the reason I like hanging out with married people and I can't hang out with single people anymore is because they still feel like the same people they were when I met them. They haven't grown. They're, they're doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. You watch TV and you watch TV back then, but I'm sure you watch TV differently now than when you did at 21. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
you don't think the same characters are cool. Right. Right? You yeah. empathize. Well, now with we them. also fall asleep 20 minutes in, you, too. Exactly. It's just, it, t- <laughs> TV is just a vessel for, for yeah. sleep, really. True. Right? A disassociation. <laughs> Disasso- it's, a, it's a disassociation, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I sit down and talk to a person and the first thing they say to me is like, hey, bro, have you seen this new show? Mm. Red flag. Bro, let's talk about fucking your lactation. Like, I would, yeah. I would rather spend an hour yeah, bro, talking about let's talk about your lactation. Let's talk about your lactation, bro. Like, is your wife <laughs> lactating? How's that going? Oh, yeah. You guys yeah. struggling with the new, like, yeah. right? But that I, interests you because you prob- you're not, you haven't been immersed in that world yet either. Yeah. It interests me because it's fucking real. Yeah. I don't, I'm tired of social media. I'm tired of, I'm tired of all of it. Mm-hmm. I get it. I think you need to go back to music. Ooh. I love this no. album we'll coming get there. soon. We'll get there. Bow, bow. <laughs> I, I am, <laughs> I am the worst musician ever. Uh, I don't know. You're not even the worst musician in the room. <laughs> don't say that. I don't even know what a, co- a note, a chord. That doesn't it, even matter. I don't make music. I rap. Rappers mm-hmm. aren't musicians. True. They're fucking rappers. Poets. Right. We speak poetry Sonnets. fast. Music is Shit. hard because you have to like f- f- feel things. Yeah. And yeah, that's what also therapy does. <sighs> Feelings. True. And Don't make him defensive. Them. I'm not defensive. Oh, no, no. I, there's, <laughs> you could ask me quite literally anything. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I'm defensive right, about I mean. anymore. Nothing. Yeah. It's why I'm untrollable. It's why I'm uncancelable. Yeah. There's nothing that hurts me anymore, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like I'm, f- I'm finally, I'm finally free. Where nothing. Shout out to Kid Cudi. Shout out to Kid Cudi. <laughs> Sh- uh, nothing. Nothing hurts. Yeah, that's nothing beautiful. hurts. Right. That's where mm-hmm. you want to be. That's where people should be. Yes. You, the reason this conversation is so easy to have is because you guys have lost your egos. Yeah. When you're talking to most people nowadays, you're not talking to them. You're talking to their ego. Mm-hmm. You're talking to the projection of who they are. But you guys are willing to be vulnerable on can- – the reason I showed up today is because you guys are willing to be vulnerable. Oh, I love you. Says the people with a podcast who need yeah. to talk about their feelings everywhere. No, no, no. <laughs> most people no. talk about – most people start a podcast to talk about their egos. Yeah. Right. I've been on these podcasts. Trust me. It's just me versus their ego. Mm-hmm. But you guys aren't that. For anybody who's watching this or listening to this, this is who they. I know these people. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've known John. I've known John Mackett for longer than eight. Let's, let's not date ourselves here. Let's not date ourselves. I've known him half my life. More, more. Yeah, right. And this is always who you are. Mm-hmm. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's what I've always. When I was younger, I didn't know why I liked you. I don't know why I like me. <laughs> That's you want to talk about that? No. no. <laughs> Therapy. I didn't know why I liked you growing up. Right? Mm-hmm. But I know why I like you now. Mm-hmm. And I know why I like your wife now. Mm-hmm. I couldn't explain it why I liked you back then. But you're exactly who I thought you were gonna be. Right? She is exactly who you think she's gonna you, be. She's too. exactly who you think she's gonna be. <laughs> Times ten too. It, seriously, you, you, knowing uh, being a dumb teenager, being a dumb twenty-something, you're exactly who I thought you were going to be. Right. Wow, you are, and it's why I was very excited about this podcast because, like, these are the conversations you and I would have, cameras on, cameras off, yeah. right? Sitting at the kitchen table or mm-hmm. dinner or whatever, yeah, yeah. shooting the shit, mm-hmm. right? Hundred percent, and. So many podcasts are social media where it's just influence talking to influence. It's PR teams talking to PR influence. teams. We're influencing here. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is a genuine conversation. I, I don't know what time it is right now. It's late. Is it? Eh, it don't matter though. It, it, to me, it doesn't. Yeah. This is one of the best conversations I've had Aww. in a long time. I lament to my wife Part of the reason I go on social media and yammer through stories is because I have no one else to talk to. Well, we're here to listen. Yeah. We're I'm here, here to listen. Mm-hmm. I'm here to listen about lactation. I'm here to listen about... We can about, do a whole other thing. I have a hundred questions about how you guys maintain a relationship We'll do so a part long. two. I would love to do a part two. Mm-hmm. 
the best thing that ever happened to me was adopting our niece. Right. And nothing gives you perspective like a, a because. <sighs> oh, please don't clip this. Gr guys don't see girls as human. It's hard for us to see you as human because we want so much from you, right? Like we inherently think so highly of you. Most. M yeah, most. Depending on the relationship with your mother. <laughs> Depending on the relationship with your mother, right? <laughs> but we think there's a reason serial killers kill women, right? Like, right. We just think so highly of you guys, right? And we don't treat you like you're human. Okay. Having a teenage girl in my house is so – it's the most – I've never wanted to be a better person. I can't yell at her. I can't. If I, ye I yelled at her one time and I hate – the amount of self-loathing that I went to bed with, I literally woke up in the middle of the night like – I've never felt worse about who I was as a person mm -hmm. than yelling at a teenage girl. Interesting. Never, never have I, never have I wanted to be a better person mm -hmm. since she moved in with us. Everything you guys see, the philanthropy, all the stuff is because I, I can't not see her for what she is, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why I have so many questions for you because I, 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 I have to be better. Every, every guy I've ever talked to, I tell him my biggest fear is having a daughter because I've been such a piece of shit for so long. I'm afraid that I'm going to send her to a guy like me. But because you're so aware of that and self-aware of that, that's not how it works. Like you – you bring a, a little girl into this world. You, the, the most important thing you could do for that little girl is love her mother and treat her mother like the, like just you, the way you love on your wife is the way she will value men and the man she chooses. Yeah. It, I mean, yep. I, I mean, that's that. And she, the way she values herself, a father's love is, I mean, this is just things that I've learned through therapy again, is more the way he dotes on me will directly impact my daughter's life. It will. And I, I, I believe that. I, that when I sat with that for a while, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so the only thing, the best thing you can do for your daughter is love your wife. Put her first. Grab her ass when you walk by her in the kitchen. Let them see you be, let her see you be loving and doting over your wife. That is the most important Putting thing. Putting you your wife do. first above the kids. Mm hmm. I think that's something that people don't really realize until you're probably farther down the road. What do you mean by that? I have to put her first above the children, way above the kids. Like our, our hierarchy, it's God, our relationship, and then kids. I can't put my relationship with six year old Leo or nine year old Viv. Or eleven year old Dom, like that. It, you guys are a team, united mm -hmm. against the forces of evil. Children, hundred percent. Basically, for and being if, superheroes. if that hierarchy is broken, all of the food pyramid, pyramid food pyramid fall, falls apart. Sure. They are all equal beneath you, hundred percent. Okay, I because the, how this pans out, no matter who you are, the relationship directly affects. If well I don't being. value her, the kids pick up on that. See? Okay. Vice versa. My niece is a... I'm glad you guys said that. Because my niece is a tricksy little devil. When she wants something, she'll try to ask... We, it took a while for us to catch on. Yeah. Right? Because I'm busy with work and my wife, yep. and sometimes we don't. Kids are smart. And so she'll ask my wife for something, wait for her to leave... And then ask me for something. And you know me. I'm a sucker for kids. So I would assume I'm the first person she's asking. I'd be like, yeah, baby. Yeah. Whatever you want. Of course I'll do it for you. Right? Like, and my wife would come home and be like, hey, why'd you tell us she can do that? I told her she can't. I'd be like, I didn't know she asked you. 
And she's like, dude, stop getting played by this girl. Like, you got to fucking step up. There. Yeah, but right? being, be, but raising a little girl and you, 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 the, the baby that you take and raise into the world is going to know from the beginning, we don't do that. We, when mommy, like, she's, she's a teenager. She moved in with you six months ago. This is probably something she just learned worked as an adult or as a teenager. But as a child, we have always said, I always say, what did daddy say? Or what did mommy that's, say? That's what we learned. That's what we learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Same page. That's what we learned. Because little kids are manipulative fucks too. <laughs> They'll figure it Except out. Okay. I tell my wife this all the time. She's like, just say no to her. You do need said, to say that's no. That's easy for you. No, you need to say no. For me, that shit is hard. No, dude. you gotta I, say no. You'll, you'll get there at some point. I, I'm just now getting there. Like He's the last six no. months, I'm just nope, no, ain't no, no excuse, no response, just no. Yeah, because, because the entitlement was, in our house is through the roof. Yeah. yeah, and granted, we have four kids, and there was a lot of questioning, a lot of requests, a lot of the begging. But it, I think a lot of guys, if not all, get to that certain point where. If they're doing right by their kid, yeah. you need to set boundaries. You need to say no. Yeah. It's – it took us – this is our fourth year having her. Oh, and four years. I thought you said six months ago. No, no, no. This is, she's started, I'm sorry. Something, some behavior started popping up. Oh, I'm sorry. Time. Okay. It took me till year four to do what you're talking about. Yeah. Where I'm able to watch my tone – not get angry, but also deliver my message in a, these are the rules. You will obey the rules. Me and my, me and my wife are a A united United force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That I took your, your, what did, what did, what am I, what did Chanel say? That's my new thing. Have you asked, have you asked Chanel this? Well, yeah. Okay. Then why are you asking me? Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Why are you asking me? Yeah, right then and there. She knows. Boundary. Boundary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You value I, that over whatever she's yes, asking for. Yes, I've caught you. Right? Because I've you're you. showing her I value my wife and her opinion over your request, need, and that's very important for children yeah. to know. I mean, or especially if we're, t- if we're speaking to little girls and their fathers, the things that I have learned through my experiences is that it really has a direct impact on. Is it okay that I occasionally uh, shit talk my wife with my niece behind her back? <laughs> Not all the time, but like. But she's yeah. your niece, your daughter. No. Within reason, like if it's no, like, never nothing bad. Right. Just like small things, like yeah. hey, let's go get hot. Let's go get dirt dog without her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, if they're no. like cute little bonding things, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're fine. Okay. It's real. It's honest. Okay. I, I do it. Good. I, I do it, right? Let's Doubt like, it now, Chanel, if you didn't. I do it sometimes where I'm just like, yeah, yeah, fucking, let's go. She's at work. Let's go get hot dogs without her. <laughs> right? You love like, some hot dogs, too. Oh, I love me a glizzy, You're a sucker man. for a glizzy. I'm a sucker for a glizzy, bro. I'll never film it, though, because every time I film eating Shut a hot dog. Shut the fuck up. You, you're grilling hot dogs every night. On not stories, eating. but like on TikTok. He's uh, not I made a hot dog video, and the first thing some do was like, oh, well, look at that. Look at you shove that glizzy down your throat, fat boy. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, that's fuck. so mean. TikTok is fucking They're fucking savages. brutal. Facebook is savages. Oh, I don't even oh, we look stay away. There. I don't even look that. Dude, stay away from the boomers, I have a, bro. I have, a cu- I have a cute video about my little lesbian sister. Being the only girl who works at a a, a luxury car dealership, I made it because I'm proud of her, and yeah. it's so funny because all of her coworkers are like middle aged white guys, and she's a 21 year old lesbian girl, and it's funny. <laughs> yeah. On every it's other, funny. Po- on, it is funny, dude. <laughs> she thinks it's funny. I think it's funny. But she's making money. She has a corner office at 22 years old. Yeah, well, God her. bless her. I'm not laughing at her. She makes more money. She makes a lot of money. I'm not going to say the exact amount. Yeah. I'm not going to put her out like that. But she, she makes a lot well. of fucking money, dude. I posted on three platforms. Everyone's super supportive. Go. She's probably the best worker there. You go on Facebook, it's like, this bitch should be working at a Subaru. Not those boomers. Bro, she's a fucking 21-year-old girl. What are you, like, Facebook is savage. Oh, I just got the gay joke at a Subaru. I didn't know Subaru was a, gay, a lesbian thing. I didn't thing. either. She oh, still I don't know, know that. Yeah. I didn't get it. Subaru is a lesbian thing, apparently. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know it like, either. Why Subaru? No, Thank you, Facebook evil head. humans, for so teaching you know me that. something. It was yeah. brought to your attention. I just yeah. thought she was a nice Boomers girl driving fucking, a car. Yeah. <laughs> Subaru. 
bro. I don't know what it is, bro. You think you would think Facebook home to like the older demographic would be? Nope. No. Nope. Those are people who know who they are. <laughs> you know uh, what? Some there's, do. There's a respect I have for those kinds of people because, yeah. like, just come out and be the person yeah, you, you motherfucker. Are. They are. are. They typically yeah. are. They're they shamelessly post anything they want. Yeah. You guys said something earlier that I meant to touch on, but you were on such a good run, I didn't want to touch it. If it sounds like I'm slurping these two, maybe I am. But I, I when people I feel are like good, we're being interviewed. When people are good parents, I genuinely oh. feel like no one gets complimented for being a good parent enough. No, please slurp away. Oh my god. Earlier you guys said something that I found very admirable. You said we gave our kid iPads and then we realized the error of our ways, so we started to pull it back. What wh- how did how did you, who were you guys unified? Was one of you like, "Hey, maybe we should get back on the iPad?" and had to convince the other or was this no, like a, t- a It was a team decision. It was like I mean, that's something we've been talking about for, I mean, we have four kids. We have, I don't even, I honestly don't even know how many devices we have in our home. It's, it's stupid. We have like, a lot. We all Between have phones. School. Like our six-year-olds now have phones. And when I say phones, phones yeah. they're 12-year-old iPhones that just work off Wi-Fi. So whether it's an iPad or a TV, they're all a device of, on which they can watch a video. Yes. Or right? a movie. They're not whatever. talking to people. They're not playing public games, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. No. Some, we have those too that don't get used and they just sit there, which piss me off. Long story short, we, it was a, something we both were cognizant of like, hey, we're seeing negative effects here. It's also something that's prevalent in millennial parent culture. Like our kids are watching too many videos. Yeah. Are they watching the right videos? How do you control the videos you watch? And we started with like, okay, we just do the restrictions so they don't right, watch the wrong shit. Then we realized that's not 100% foolproof and sh- shit still sneaks through. It was okay, a gradual How do you stop process. that? You, you only watch with them. So now we're only watching on the TV. Yeah, it was just like a gradual, it was a gradual thing. gradual thing, and but also the the hard part of that is, it was giving up this peace and like time when I could get things done. It was convenient. Yeah, so I had to, I had to, I had to acknowledge that my shit that I was prioritizing was not as important as them leaving me alone. I give them an hour of quiet time, hour hour and a half. They have quiet time. When I, I, it was my sanity with all four of them home all summer long. It's a lot the twins, of kids. It's a lot of kids. A lot of clowning I'm doing. Literally, like I am clowning. their fucking entertainer. <laughs> I am clowning. That's I am such a good. Literally, way to put their it. entertainer, their breakfast, lunch, and dinner providers. We're fucking entertainers all summer, and I was like, "This is the time you're going to take, and you can watch a movie, or you can watch this, this, and this, whatever." Because it was my piece, but my stip we had we had rules around it. Boundaries like thirty minutes or longer. Watch Disney Plus or watch um, Netflix. Netflix, or, whatever. Or lo- yeah, approved YouTube videos, whatever. <sighs> People think I'm some like wild man who just says shit, but I'm actually quite considerate. Do you mind if I ask you a question? <laughs> ask whatever the fuck you want. Okay. When you guys go to dinner, like eat out, yes. do they sit there? All the time. Not all the time. Do they sit there with the iPad at Not dinner? all the Sometimes. time. Sometimes. So, with my first, so with the first, I would bring a restaurant bag with Play-Doh, paint, coloring shit. A restaurant bag. Yeah. Restaurant fucking, bag. I love that. Yeah, I, I would, had things that they could I'm manipulate with their hands. Right now. Keep them busy because I was not They're giving kids. them. They didn't engage, yeah. Yeah. yeah but you, it also sometimes took, they give you crayons on a piece of paper. You brought a whole craft set. I did. By twins, I was like, here's my phone. Leave me the fuck alone while I eat dinner. Okay. <laughs> but we didn't go out very often because it was too hard. So we were home a lot. But this is one of those things, and I, we, we've talked about this before, like you don't know until you know. We were yeah. those people probably similar to you yeah. where you see that shit and you that cringe. Absolutely not. I'll never you don't know do until that. you know. Exactly. And then we knew, and it was easy and convenient. And yeah. We hadn't been to a, a real restaurant in months, and we needed to just get through it and survive. Yeah. And we wanted everyone to be happy and to not let, let the servers be pissed off and at, to just kind of be complacent yeah. and get through the meal. And then we started walking it back, too. Like, I think we're better at that today than we were a year or two ago. Yeah, but they're also older. Do you ever that reminisce too. 
I can't remember, right? I've blocked out most of my childhood for, for various reasons. Do you ever remember how your parents took you to a restaurant? My, I, I was, my dad's an entertainer. I was out meeting people and socializing my entire life. Okay. So, I have the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I don't I, ever remember going to like ever, restaurants. Ever. Ever. Aaron, we, Aaron and I talk about this all the time. We never went places. I don't remember going anywhere. Maybe I it was just etiquette. our, yeah. we were in the fucking, in your box. We didn't go anywhere in that box. No. I no. never went to a restaurant. I mean, we did. I'm, I'm being facetious here. Yeah. Like exaggerating. If my dad hit a parlay, we'd oh. go to like the Gold Rush Casino and have like steak night. Yeah. But Very rare. I don't remember what I did. We go to a restaurant three times a week. Canes, and then a, a good restaurant, and then other, something else. And that that was like if I I went to like a nice casual, fast casual restaurant as a kid. Yeah, that was like the highlight the of the year, bro. If we ended up at Chili's, I knew we had just gotten paid. <laughs> I knew we Chili's had hit is the great, big great yeah. chips and salsa. Do you guys have? I've grown an admiration for my parents over the years, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm str- I was struggling as a twenty something. And my parents were 20-something with fucking three of us, right? And I know how, how I'm struggling trying to figure life out mm-hmm. by myself. And they were struggling. And again, here I am slurping again. But you guys were 20-somethings mm-hmm. s- struggling with yep. kids, mm-hmm. right? Did it lead you to having more admiration or more understanding for your own parents definitely understanding i think we both came from different experiences too okay like like we just quickly a minute ago like her dad was an entertainer and lots of high highs lots of low lows and he was not home a lot my mom basically yeah lots of road lifestyle so you're eating out naturally because you're not at home okay whereas i was typical upper middle not even upper middle class just middle class yeah and you know we didn't eat out much. We had hamburger helper a lot. Hey. We had homemade pizzas a lot. Hey. And I never saw anything wrong about oh, the that. French bread, or did you get actual pizza? No, crust? French bread's gross, bro. Oh, uh, sure. people did it, but I, it's it's not good. Oh. Would you ever go order a French bread pizza right now? As a kid, it was the highlight of my week. Exactly. But today, like it was. It's no, not, no, fuck no. Right, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's not sustainable. But when you no. were a kid, you enjoyed it. I I nixed the French bread pizza, but I understand it. Um, we couldn't afford pizza crust. That's a luxury. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's something. We just my, use the leftover loaf. That's something that in my family, I like I said, different experiences. We live with my grandparents a lot of my life, but I don't. It's it's it. Uh, my dad always really was always entertaining, always on the road, and we always we didn't always go out, but we always between my grandparents and their hard work and my mom taking care of us and had food on the table mm-hmm. always had like my grandma i mean it it I, I yeah restaurants are definitely way more like things yeah your, we your do. life was like 50 50 you were like your grandparents were very like blue collar hard work yeah my grandparents gritty, were landscapers and, and then your dad was an entertainer and on the road a lot and that came with its own set of lifestyle yeah it's weird very yeah but they like so you guys are more traditional than most people our age. Yes. Right? Yeah. Whereas most people our age are just now starting to you know, try to have kids. Yeah. And we're hitting this weird going from angsty kids who see our parents as these villains in our life. To kind of like, oh, this is why they kind of were the way they Yeah, yeah. Were. Yeah, we're very conscious of that. You're very conscious yeah. of it, uh-huh. right? I've... Do you guys watch your kids' TikToks? They ki- what do you mean? They don't have... They don't have... They don't, you don't, you don't let your kids have t- no. TikToks? No, they don't all. have any. They're enough. not old enough, but... Okay, at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Then never mind. Yeah. I, 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 I use TikTok to understand my niece... When she falls asleep, she doesn't watch this, so who cares? When she falls asleep, we grab her phone and scroll through her TikTok page so mm. we can understand see what, what she's into. Yeah. What she because she doesn't it. she doesn't know how to like to connect with her or to understand her. She, I was that kid, 
right? Where I felt very, I don't want to dive into black culture with you guys. That, that It would put an onus on you that would be irresponsible of me, right? But as a kid, I felt very isolated, right? And my niece reminds me a lot of myself mm. where she feels kind of isolated because she grew up a really smart kid but didn't really have anybody to share her interests with, you know? Fair. And so she still feels a little... We've put her in everything from hockey to flag football to basketball to painting to pottery. We've literally like really tried to be like, hey, dude, kid, be anything you want, anything you want to be, right? But she still has a hard time like... Watching on to something. Or just expressing what she's interested in. Okay. So by going through her TikToks, and I feel kind of guilty admitting this because now I'm kind of like spying on her, but it's helped me. I, I noticed she was looking at a lot of astrology videos, a lot of like anything with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So over dinner, I'm like, oh, yeah, man. There's this guy named Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he said this really interesting thing. And she said, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. Whoa, what did he say? Mm. And I'm like, oh, you know him? So oh. you're looking at it as a form of connection with her. How do you guys to connect level. with your kids? It's that we just it, it varies. This. I mean, we got two, two different you know, mm-hmm. constructs here. Three boys, one Meeting girl. Meeting them, best advice. Meet them where they're at. If they're yeah. playing a video game, you sit next to them, pretend to play the video game. If she's playing like Roblox with her cousin, you, we sit next to them, or she's doing some kind of design game where she's designing a dress, sit next to her. Why'd you do that? It's going where they are and doing yeah. what they're doing. That's and a good way of summing up. Finding that. interest in what they're into, like what you did. Yep. Bringing Showing that you care about what they care about. About what they care about. Even Sorry, if you my don't mom fucking is texting care. Me like crazy. <laughs> I'm, I want all my real estate clients who watch this to know I'm completely blowing you off right now, and I'm not sorry. Mm-hmm. This is too much fun for me. I'm sorry. I'm too I love it. I love it. I do have to be the bearer of bad news, though. My mom needs us to start heading home because she has to. There is a problem. <laughs> uh oh. Kids. I don't mean to see kids. Kids do. Ruin everything. Do you guys but, love how good of an excuse having kids are to get out of things? No. Oh. They ruin a lot more than they're an excuse. Yeah, that's true. But it's still a good excuse, right? No one can ever question it. When it's you. convenient. But it's right convenient, now it's right? not convenient. I don't think we've ever really used, unless they were like sick, we don't really use them as an excuse because we're at that place where we're like, sorry, we're not coming. We're just, or we're not doing that. Yeah. yeah. We. I mean, it is, it is. A lot of times, kid, we're not invited because we have so many kids. So it's like it's not really an issue for us. Part yeah. two, okay, no, no, because that's a whole nother. I have so many. <laughs> you guys think I'm joking, bro? I have a no. hundred questions. I would I'm, love to answer them, but my I'm mother so is losing. No, no, her do your thing. Right do your thing. <laughs> do your thing. I'm I a, will do a part two. Okay. We. I don't. Or you can just come over and we can sit at the table and turn on mics and talk <laughs> as much as you want. Okay. I'm a. I'm. My greatest characteristic is that I genuinely like people and I'm genuinely interested in like what you're doing. Why do you do that? Yeah, but we also do a lot of shit. please do yeah. not base your entire idea of parenting and based on us. I mean, we'll be happy to we tell do, you we where we fucked up. We do have a good cross section though. We got a yeah, lot of shit. Yeah, but we'll tell you where we fucked up and where you should be better, but oh, yeah. where we fucked up and There's you plenty sh- of errors. But I, I don't, I would definitely do a a survey of a lot of families. I do. <laughs> okay, I, good. I do. Okay. I, uh, my job puts me in front of a lot of people with kids, and I'm always inquisitive and asking questions. That's I just, wonderful. I just, you guys are a group of people I'm allowed to ask my more intrusive thoughts with. Yes. Right? Intrude anytime there's, you there's want. There's a comfortability here where I don't, I'll still ask you, hey, is it okay if I ask you this? Mm-hmm. Right? But I still feel comfortable. Asking you guys questions. And yeah. I, I do appreciate you guys. I love I love it. Yeah. I'm not interested in me. I'm the worst we podcast are. host. Well, <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to give people the same. like cause, But like you guys are interesting to me because you're different. The whole world thinks that they want to be influencers. And I think that you guys are the coolest people in the wow, world. That's really so fucking nice. <laughs> I do. You're I, it's one million easy to, percent wrong, but I appreciate what I it. do is so easy. Every I'm the, my job is so I eat food for a fucking living. What's hard about what there's nothing interesting or hard about what I do. I don't learn any life lessons from what I do. I don't grow from what I do. I just give people what they want. I give them porn. I give them porn with food, right? Mm-hmm. You guys are 
bringing people who could change the world into this world. Mm. You guys are dealing with hurt breasts. You're dealing with uh, crushed egos. You're dealing with companionship. You're dealing with the harsh realities of what it takes to bring not just kids, but good kids into the world. What's more interesting than that? Wow. Now that you put it that way, really nothing. Nothing. <laughs> There's nothing more interesting than that. Yeah. No. I, mean, I, mean, I like watching the NBA a lot. That's pretty fun. On for that me. note, <laughs> thank you, Mackin. <laughs> uh, Team USA is my shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's such a dude answer. I know. It I is have, such a dumb answer, and he irony. doesn't even feel that way. That's such no, a dude I mean, answer. Well, I, I always think, how hard is it to be an NBA player when you know, you know, you got that girl pregnant last night. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we are so grateful that you made time uh, to come here and actually cared like to hear our side of shit. Bro, I, this is going to be a part two because I have done. I have so much more shit. We'll run it back, you guys. Come on over. Okay, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go for burgers, four dollar burgers. Oh yeah, it's too far from you guys. Oh, we'll go is? for bougie burgers with you Ooh. guys. Okay, whatever. I I'll just take love a, burger a good anyway. burger. I can get one. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Brian. We love Always. you, bro. Thank you for coming. We'll do this again in some way, shape, or form. I'm so glad I didn't have to cancel today. I love you for that. Around 6.45 when I was... You were ready. She, I was in the shower. She's like, phone tag. She's like, oh, shit. He's, something came up. He can't do it. I'm like, no, no he's going to do it. I wouldn't. After all you've done now for you're me, gonna, I would never. Now you're like, now you're going to come back. So Anytime. And we love you. Anytime. We love you. Thank, Thank you, bro. You. We'll do this again. Soon. Thank you. Bang. <laughs>